<clears throat> so where I left off last time with Bob was this move. This move. This move. This. Whoop, I can't even input it, apparently. This look. Down back three plus four, four. They nerfed it back to where it was in Tekken 6. Because uh, I was saying in Tag 2, the shit was cheap. Because they took away uh, this. That block stun. They took that away in Tag uh, 2. They still made it so the first slow was launched punishable. But then because they took away that block stun. He was able to fake you out. Stop you from punishing him. By only doing the first hit. And then the second hit has counter hit properties. I was like, uh, if I could get it to connect by itself. See? Doesn't give, uh, it gives him like a chop, I think, or something. I don't think it gives him a juggle or anything like that. Like, you can't pick up with, oop, with down 3, 4. I can't even do down 3 in time. He recovers so slow. So he might probably get some chop or something, guaranteed. Uh, but in general, it's still like a good low from standing. It's probably his most threatening low from standing on normal hit outside of the hell sweep. Uh, just from standing. Neutral and shit. Uh, it's plus 8, but it pushes back quite a bit, which means any of his lows, one back dash, and they will all get blown up. Where the fuck is back dash? Right, so like... See? See, any low... Damn, he recovers so slow trying to instant... Yeah, so you could uh, crouch dash in their face, but you have to get a good dash in there to beat out a back dash. But your mids are good to reach. So see, the down two, maybe maybe uh, Cracker Jacker. Yeah, Cracker Jacker, the first hit reaches. Holy shit, not the second hit. That's a bad uh, look. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So, only the first to the Cracker Jacker, huh? That's weird. So, if I'm going to go mid after that, it's going to be down 2, personally. Down 2-4 or down 2... Yeah, down 2-4, really, that's it. Or down 2-1. To so keep them still. I mean, that won't keep them still. They can still backdash and block that, but... The moment you establish that you have a mid to frame trap them with, that allows you to dash in their face. I take better advantage of that plus eight. It's kind of like Wadong's down three, four, plus eight, but it pushes you far away. Uh, what's going on, Surasenki? Going well so far. Uh, Jack is super honest. Jack is broken. I must have missed some stuff. Thanks, video games. Uh, all right. So anyway, let me open up the ORB Norway. And go based on that, like always. Let me just shift over my volume here a bit. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> so next on the list here is back one. And he has a back one, two extension. Back one by itself, 17 frames, mid, mid. Back one by itself is according to this negative nine on block plus four force crouch on hit. Same thing on counter hit. All right. And then back one two is natural combo. 31 damage. Not bad. Range looks good. All right. Range looks pretty good. One back dash basically. Uh, back one two is also safe. Plus eight. Uh, sorry. Plus seven to plus eight. So plus seven. Standing once again though look at all the space you created so yeah plus seven But you gotta like the same situation basically as this Consider it the same thing if you connect with if you connect with back one too It is nice to have a mid mid that does good damage like that and it's really like a nice amount of frame advantage on normal hit and safe on block That's pretty good Let's see how it tracks Yeah. Mm hmm. I was just stair stepping it. So, the second hit will cover you if they just try to sidestep it to a button. Oop. Oh, 
well, no, he takes quite a while to swing that second hit out, actually. <laughs> so it doesn't cover you that well. Uh, but it is a nice option to have. And my guess were to be if uh, your back were to the wall, it probably wouldn't push, wouldn't create all that space. So it could really threaten you at the wall. Bob is probably still really good at the wall. He's always been good at the wall. I imagine he's still really solid at the wall. Uh, how does that look in juggles? I don't know. Okay, good. It does combo. So that's like a weird little wall float you might be able to do if you're like close to the wall. Too close to the wall to get anything other than one hit. You might be able to fit that because it's like a small amount of float. You get what I'm saying? Like, um... Oh, maybe not. Oh, wrong button. I'm no ball player, guys. I'm learning too. Uh, does that work at all? Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, maybe it's no good for that. So, maybe just did a neutral. Not so much for juggles. The tracking does suck. And it is 17 frames. But if you got them petrified, that's not bad. I like that it's safe. All right, another special encounter for the second hit. If you're really close to the wall, just down back to... Yeah, probably, you're right. It's just, uh, I'm talking about fitting as much damage as possible off of a short wall carry. <laughs> 31 damage for negative 17. Oh, uh, yeah, 17 frame punisher. No, if, you're, if, you, if your opponent is negative 17, you're not going to do back one two. You're going to do cracker jacker. 40 damage for 16, right? Is that what that is? So, yeah, 16 frames. 16 frames, and it probably has more range. Yeah, see, more range. More than one backdash. I already confirmed. All right, so we'll talk about Cracker Jacker when I get there. Next is, oh, here's a big one. Back two. So this is the classic, uh, this is a good string, but bad Bob players will complete this string more often than they should. You've probably seen this. You've probably seen this a lot. All right, so that's back two, two, four, four. That's the full string. The way it works is the first two hits are natural combo. The third and the fourth hit are natural combo. It's mid-high, mid-high. You conduct the second hit and the fourth hit. That's like how you beat the string. And it's going to be a string you're going to see a lot of bad and mediocre bot players use. They will especially use the back two, two very liberally. The good bot players will use the back two by itself more often than not. Unless they realize that you are you don't know how, anything about fighting Bob, then they'll be doing it a lot to fuck with you. Uh, but if you're going to, like, mix this up, don't just do this. And it's like, now I'm going to do it. You know, that's a shitty way to mix. That's like your fucking green ranks. Don't do that shit. You know? You got to keep that pocket sand shit in your back pocket and then throw it out in some weird situation where, like, for example, he's near the wall. And then you realize that... They're swinging a lot after back 1-1, one, one, but they're not ducking back. I'm oh, sorry, back 2-2, two, two, but they're not ducking the back, you know, the, the second hit. But they're swinging. Maybe, then don't don't throw this out right away if you notice that. Save that information. And it's like, oh, we're kind of close to the wall right now. And then all of a sudden you go, ba ba, and then they fly into the fucking wall. And then you kick the shit out of them because Bob does a lot of wall damage. Um, but yeah. The other thing about back 2-2 two, two is, I will show this again since there's some new people here today. Nice and early, too. So you may be wondering what people mean when they say, uh, you got to do weird shit to punish Eddie. Capos, if you will. If you will, Dusty Rhodes. Hey, thanks, uh, Dynamic Escape. What's going on? I decided to uh, spend my birthday to give the gift of uh, teaching <laughs> and learning. I'm learning too. I don't know shit about Bob. Yeah, back two is his 13th frame because his down forward one is 14. So back two is basically his 13th frame mid poke. So anyway. You've seen this move, right? You've seen that move, that capoeira move. You'll notice that when I block it, it's negative 14. What does that mean? Negative 14 means if you were to hit Eddie with a 14 frame or faster move, that connects against relaxed tense, 
you will flow him. You will flow him. That means some characters are able to punish this with a float into a juggle. Bob is one of them. Bob has two options. One of them is the move I just showed you. Right? 13 frames, and it hits him in that situation. The other one, the one that you're going to want to use is down back two, which I found out last time. Because that's 14 frames. Now you can, in case you're wondering, if your character doesn't have this as an option to punish this, you can punish him with something slower, but it will not float him. Like, uh... See? You can punish him with slower shit. Uh... What's a good, uh... Doesn't he have, like, an elbow drop or something? Whatever. Anyway, you see? Typically, you'll get, like, a stomp on him if you can't. Like, a dragon off. We'll get a stomp or a down two. So, that's the rule. Find out if your character has a 14 frame or faster move to float him. And if you're wondering, but Manny, I've hit people with slower shit and launched them. That's because the Capoeira player was mashing. Like, if he's mashing after you block that, you're going to get a full launch on him. Wow, that was too slow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Alright, that's a bad choice because he's crushing. Let's do something else. Nope, let's do the mid. Just to really show you guys. See? Hmm. Anyway, you got that. It gets weird because he's still evasive, obviously, but it gets weird. If, you, if I were able to hit him earlier, and it, it had a good hitbox, it would fully launch him as if he were standing. There's like a window where he's fully standing, but the move I did puts him in the float state again. That's why it was weird there. But I just wanted to show that. The good Capoeira players, they'll do that move, and if you block it, they'll just stay there. And then they'll take the one, the single hit, and then you'll knock him away, and then they'll get up. The bad capital players are going to mash. Back three? Hmm. Yeah, back two floats. Does Dragon Ball get an overhead on block for that Eddie move? Uh, not overhead. That's an interesting way of putting it. No, uh, Dragon Ball gets down two. And I think the stomp. Down plus three plus four. But you should just do down two with Dragon Off. If you block that. Uh, we air fault those kind of reactions. <laughs> Boss back to his 13 frames. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, EJB, that's what I was just talking about. Except you don't want to do back 2-2. Two, two. Back 2-2 two, two scaling is going to be shitty. You want to do down back 2 because that will also float back 3-3. Three, three. Down back 2. That's what you should do as Bob. As long as you don't delay this one frame, this will flow Eddie, and you'll get a juggle. Did you see the video from uh, Frame Whisper put out about Eddie saying it's as if he has more health because of damage scaling, and he's considered airborne a lot of the time? I mean, sure, that used to be an annoying thing, but Eddie is a lot riskier in this game. Like, he's always been risky, but in this game, it's easier to punish him, because in the older games... Eddie, a lot of his stuff pushed back on block. There was all sorts of dumbass shit. For example, his down forward 2 used to be negative 10. Now it's negative 9. So the farce is gone. But before it was negative 10, but like the spacing on that, nobody was able to jab punish it consistently. So he would do down forward 2 into down forward 2. And like catch you for jabbing him. <coughs> but now it seems like they took away some of the high crushing aspect of down forward 2. At least it's not as good. And they just made a negative 9. So that's it. No more of that bullshit. Another thing, Eddie's uh, down four plus three plus four mid used to push back more and make him further, put him further away from you. Now he just kind of, it doesn't really push it back at all. He just kind of moves himself back a bit. And he's still negative 23 or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I got to drink some water. Excuse me. 
<sighs> I mean, yeah, EJB, if it's muscle memory, then do it. Just get your guaranteed punish. I'm just saying, ideally, think about it. That's 10, that's 10 damage. That's 17 damage. And especially if you were to do back 2-2. Two, two. 10 to 12 damage is going to take your 70% and then 50% scaling. But if you do this, you probably, uh, I don't know what the juggle would be. The ideal juggle, because like I'm not a bot player. But this is 17 damage up front. Float some high. You could probably get more creative with your juggles and get more damage. Just guessing. <clears throat> so, that's what I'd use for back 2. Either way, goes back 2 is 13 frames to the 14 frames, so it gives you an extra frame if, of lateness. All the back three threes two hits, so you really shouldn't be late with that anyway. But still, it's there. Uh, and back two by itself is a good poke. Negative five. All right. So let's uh, do the old AI shit. Uh, uh. This is really track. All right. Looking good. Yeah, it looks like we got a right side tracker here with this back two. I forget how Bob's... Tra oh, so Bob has down forward one to track to his left side and back two to track to his right side. He has both of his sides covered by poke. Not one poke, sorry, but two pokes. So you don't have to sacrifice poking to cover one side. I like that. That's good. That's a good thing to know. It's not quite as cheap as Dragunov's down forward one is right now, but still. <clears throat> as you see, if he goes the other way... See? All right. Well, what about? All right. Just making sure. Yeah. So it doesn't beat step, though. <clears throat> oh, it does. Oh, it's a little weird. A little weird. Okay, as long as you mash. Oh. Yeah, I gotta mash. Okay, so if I'm a little bit slow, he'll beat it out. Unless it's on plus one. Okay. But it definitely seems solid for his right side. Yeah, down forward one, two has a follow up. Down back two, back four, four. Oh, back four, four. Okay, cool. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, the point is to take capitals and link out of stats so you don't have to deal with the mix-up. Correct! What Kenny KDL said. With Ling and, and, and capitals, if you can get a bigger damage, uh, you know, option, get it. But the, and the same thing goes for Huarang. But in general, you just kind of want to hit him with something to get him out of their stance. Your goal shouldn't be damaged unless you have something like Bob's down back two for back three three. Shit like that. That's a different story. That's just block punishment. In the neutral, if you're there in stance, your general idea, your general goal is to hit them out of that fucking stance. Just hit them out of the stance. Make them play second. This may, this is mainly the case for Eddie because you're not going to stop. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's mainly the case for Eddie and Huarang because you're not going to be able to stop Ling Xiaoyu. Ling Xiaoyu is going to do it no matter what you do. Ling Xiaoyu is going to keep doing it. But uh, Eddie is the one that you, you could really put a stop to that shit more often than not. And Huarang is kind of in the middle, in, the, in between, between those two characters. Because Huarang is going to force his shit on hit. Eddie's transitions into capo, it's a capo in a sense. It's a relaxed stance. Sorry, guys, I just woke up not so long ago. It's his transitions into relaxed stance. Out of all of them, on hit, only two of them put him in a situation where the low launching option will reach you if you backdash. Unless you're Gigas. Or maybe Jack. I don't know. Whoever has a shitty backdash. Akuma? I don't know. But in general, if Eddie hits you with his transitions into relaxed stance, the low, the slippery kicks, the low launcher, do not reach you if you backdash. Outside of like two instances. One of them is the handstand low poke that goes into relax. And I can't remember the other one right now. You'd have to look at my Eddie run through on YouTube. <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. It was such a long time ago. Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, if you scroll down, you'll see a link to my YouTube and my Twitter. 
uh, I upload these stream archives to the YouTube, and I've gone through more than half the cast at this point. I might be at 75%. <clears throat> where I go through these character move lists, as I'm doing right now. Uh, did I miss any questions? Uh... Back to whiffs on her AOP duck. Everything whiffs on AOP duck. You have to go low to hit AOP duck. That's the point. Back two probably hits her at a regular AOP, but when she does AOP duck, it's gonna whiff. Everything, except maybe this, because this hits grounded. But this sucks now. And thank God it sucks, because fuck that move. Second six, man. Fuck that move forever. All right, so we know that back two, two tracks. And I don't think you really need to look at the whole strings tracking, really. Uh, well, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> okay, thought so. So yeah, so it's very weak to his left side. So we got that out of the way. Um... I think sometimes it's also used as a wall combo. I don't know if it's any good as a wall combo. But I know it is sometimes used as a wall combo. And the last kick in the end of that string is a uh, tailspin. Corkscrew. So if you happen to hit somebody out of the air during your poking. The cool thing is, if you do back two by itself and you happen to hit somebody out of the air, he could still convert. You could do like down forward one, down three, four. Easily. As an easy conversion. Probably better stuff too. Uh, but then if you do back 2-2, two, two, he could still convert it. And then now we know if you do the whole string, he could convert it anyway because it's going to core screw. So no matter where you end this string at the, as a poke, as a poke string, if you happen to hit somebody out of the air, he will convert. You should be able to convert with him. Maybe even off of the third hit, but if you're going to go for the third hit, just go for the fourth in my opinion. Alright, um, oh yeah, and one more thing that I didn't mention. 4, 3, 3 plus 4. This is from last time. This is a mid-stage juggle lender where the last kick in the end is guaranteed, but it doesn't combo. What that means is it uh, resets the scaling and always does 11 damage at the end. Uh, it's like uh, Gigas. If you know about Gigas' combo ender, the ground pound, down forward 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2. The first two hits combo, the last ground pound does not, but it's guaranteed. And it always does 16 damage for Gigas. That's why Gigas' juggle damage is so high. Bob has that going on with this stream too. The thing is, you need to know how to do a run. Just like Jack you need to, and, and Law, you have to know how to do a run-up neutral for three, which is not hard to do. You basically like let go of the, of the uh, double tap forward and then let go of the forward before you finish the run and then tap forward three after neutral. So the combo example, basic-ass combo. See? 60 plus 11 damage. That's 71 damage off of his hop kick. You don't have to do it. Yeah, you do. Look, if you don't do neutral 4, he gets forward 4. He gets forward 4 if you do running 4. You have to do neutral. It's like Jack. Because that's 4-3-4. Four, 4-3-3 three, four. Four, three, three plus 4. With Law, you don't have to? Oh, really? Oh, okay, fuck Law. Uh, <laughs> with Bob, with Bob and Jack, you do that. I just assume because Law dashes up, it's a four-three DSS. I assume that was the case for him. Uh, good for Law. Fuck him. With Bob and Jack, you do. Dylan, you're only making it harder by doing that. You're only making it harder by doing that. You're only making it harder. It's easier to do neutral. You will never fuck it up. Do it the right way. Trust me. It's just a timing thing. Just do it the right way. I mean, I guess do it the way that, you know, if you're already used to that way, that's fine. My recommendation is learn it that way. Because if you're going to do 4 4 4 you're going to fuck it up that one time and then you're going to get this at the end of your juggle. And it's going to be like, what the fuck? My way, you'll always get the move. It's just a matter of the timing.
Also, learning it that way will help you if you play uh, Jack in the future. Did I miss anything? Hermits are way more scary than a knockdown into a guaranteed hit. What are you talking about, Ling? Uh, now, nah, Ling has good lows and mids. Ling is, is kind of like that. And then her fucking snake edge kick. She's able to cancel to back turn, so that, that's another way she could fuck with you. By making you hesitate to block the low. It's That cancel is bullshit. She should never have had that cancel. Off of a move like that? No. Don't give that shit to her off of a fucking snake edge. Are you kidding me? The whole point of a snake edge is to see it on reaction and block it. Unless they crush under your high. Don't give her the option to, like, fake you out with a can. That's so lame, dude. That shit's so lame. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, so that's back two series. Next we got back three, and this is, I don't even know if this is a new kick or not, but this is one of those Oki kicks that flip the opponent when they're grounded. This is also a jungle lender for Bob that I see fairly often. But yeah, it, it does that. Uh, but Bob's is like, um, uh, not Miguel's, um, fuck, what's his name? Shaheen's. In that it is quite unsafe. Not as unsafe as Shaheen's. But he does have good range on his. That's good. Yeah, he has really good range on his. Look at this. That's probably why it's a good jungle lender. I've seen people like that very tip of this kick just connects at the end of their of certain bob juggles. Not there though. Uh, this on block is whatever. Negative fifteen. Now Bob cannot launch negative fifteen on normal hit. Um, Bob gets, uh, this. <laughs> That's his 15 frame punish. Um, so it's not a big deal in this matchup, but most characters will be able to launch that. It does push back some, though, so I wonder. Maybe some cases they'll whiff. So if you happen to be fighting against a Bob and he notices being used as an Oki 2, remember, if you tech and block that, or if you stand up and mid-block that, you could, you could probably launch him, depending on your character. It's not much to say about that, like, this is not a movie you should be using in the neutral, really. So, it's like, I shouldn't even bother to test the tracking, but I guess I will anyway. Yeah, this is like a, strictly an Oki and a Juggle tool. Maybe off of a wall combo, too. Yeah, see, no tracking at all on that shit. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, Shaheen's version of this kick, I don't remember the input, but it's like back four or back three or some shit, I think. It's negative 17. Oh, it's a counter hit launcher, too? That just makes it better as an Oki tool. Okay, cool, thank you. So it's like the demon pedal, right? The, 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 the devil gin shit. So, uh, just because it's a counter hit launcher, don't assume that means it's a counter hit tool. 17 uh, frames. It's not a counter hit tool in that way. What that means is it's just a bonus of if they were to get up mashing, you'd get a juggle. That's all that it means. If you catch a wake up kick, you get a juggle. Don't use it as a neutral counter hit tool. Unless you have some sort of crazy ass read, I would not recommend using it as a neutral counter hit tool. If you're going to use a neutral counter hit tool, down forward two should be the only thing you have in mind as a neutral counter hit tool. It's two frames faster than a safe on block and it crushes highs. So. It crushes jabs, at least. Pretty damn good. Oh, speaking of that, let me show you guys this again. What's that sweet spot? Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Negative nine all block poke. Spacing doesn't care about that shit. Spacing doesn't care about a negative nine on block poke. Oh, I'm doing down forward one. Yep. That's, keep that in mind. No matter which character you use, if you're looking through your character's move list and you notice. Look at that pushback. When you notice that, take a t take an opportunity to ignore the fact that it says negative nine on block or negative eight or negative seven, 
and uh, do a little uh, tweaking, do a little testing, see what happens. Now, if they swing mid, they're going to beat you out. But you know what? If a down forward two crushes jab, a jab in that situation, or makes it whiff, try a backdash and see what happens. You'd probably make a lot of mids whiff. Down forward two to down forward two is classic, Bob. I don't think it's as good in this game, is it? Let's see. This is like old, like classic Bob. Yeah, see? This used to like crush really well, like jabs. All fucking day long. Down forward two is such horse shit, dude. Can you believe that his down forward two was normal hit launcher in Tekken 6.0? Normal hit launcher. And you might be wondering, yeah, but Bob and Law, but their their down forward two isn't this down forward two. At least though as it was back then. Their down forward twos are like way more limited in range and shit like that. And crushability. Crushability? Crushability, that's not the way to put it. Crushing opportunity. <laughs> I need to work on my spacing for my negative moves. Yeah, man. You know, if you're a Gigas player especially, that's a big part of Gigas. His down forward one, his 14 frame mid poke, has a shitload of images from like back here. And on block, it pushes out almost as much as this does. It pushes out like kind of like that. So if you're uh, poking with, with Gigas' down forward from back here... Even though it's negative 7 or 8, I think. He's good to go. All he needs to do is whip punish you with a 1-2. That's all Gigas is looking for always. 1-2. Oh, you whipped front me? 1-2. Yeah, sure. Down 2 for the big whips. But it's always 1-2. Knock down. 31 or 32 damage. Whatever it is. Gigas sucks. Fuck Gigas. Bring Marta back. Anyway. Uh, Alright, so we were talking about back 3. So we got that out of the way. Next is back 4. So, back four has uh, two extensions, but back four by itself is 15 frames. 15 frames! So, so we got another 15 frame Punisher here? Oh, that's not a natural combo. I always thought that was a natural combo. Not a, oh, never mind. That's not a 15 frame punish then. All right, well, back four by itself is uh, negative seven on block plus four on hit. Same thing on counter hit. Puh, right? Uh, back four, four is mid high, negative seven on block. Plus, oh, sorry, I was about to say plus. Knockdown, back 4-4 four, four is knockdown and tailspin, obviously. I don't think that's surprising anybody. Ba-ba, right? Makes sense. Uh, and it's a counter combo, assuming. Yep, all right. 15 frame counter combo, mid-high. It probably doesn't jail. Probably does not jail. Yeah, I see. And then we got back four one, which is also negative seven. It is mid mid. This is like the first two hits. Uh, this is like Dragon Ball's Death March back four two. Death March. This is plus nine force crouch on hit. Now there, with that spacing, you could force a mix up. You could go low basically here. See? There's no backdashing. And plus 9, there's no sidestepping shit. And even then, it's forcing crouch. So you can only sidestep towards the background when you force crouch. Remember that. No matter what your character is, if you are in a forced crouch situation, whether you put yourself there or your opponent forced you there, you can only sidestep towards the background instantly. Otherwise, you'd have to crouch cancel and then sidestep down. Either way, in this case, plus 9 doesn't matter. Plus 9... Yeah, sure, there's nothing guaranteed, but you can't sidestep when you're at negative nine. Up close. Sidestepping is not an option for you. Uh, Gigas uses one, two, yes. Gigas uses one, two until launch punish. That is correct. Uh, unless it's a mid situation, he has to... If it's a situation where the opponent recovers crouching and they're not negative 15. Uh, if he's standing, he has to use uh, for like 13 frames... What the fuck does Gigas use? He has like standing 4 or standing 3, one of those buttons for 14 frames. Uh, down 4, 3 by itself <laughs> is 13 frames. Uh, Gigas sucks. Yeah, his 1 2 is the best meterless jab punish in the game. Meter characters have better jab punishes when they have meter. All three of them Geese, Eliza, and Akuma. 
Uh, all right. So anyway, that is back four. There's not much else to say. Let's see how it tracks. What about that second hit? Okay, so it's not like Dragon Ball's back four three. Okay. Oh wow, the punch does at least. So no tracking at all on this move. This move's kind of whatever. I know it's used during certain juggles, like the back 4-4. Four, four. Alright, well, that's that. Next we got... What the fuck do we have next? Back 1 plus 2. Ah, this is an old counter hit string. So this string is back plus 1 plus 2, both punches. And then 1, and then 2. This used to be a fucked up Oki tool on Tekken 6. In Tekken 6, after a bound, he would do this. Sorry, he would do this to end the jungle. Just back one plus two. And then, if he did, if you were to try to get up at all at the end of his jungle, that second hit would float you, and then he would get a back two, and then he would get a full jungle again. If you were to try to get up at all after this first hit spikes you. Uh, and then, if you were to stay down, he does that stupid ass elbow drop of his. Like, uh,. I don't even know the input for it anymore. But that's all long gone now since uh, Oki's different in this game, right? I don't think it's still going to work. Yeah, see? It'll probably hit guaranteed, maybe. I don't know, but it won't float because floats are like that are gone unless you hit a spring kick. That's the only time you float opponents. Spring kicks, if you hit them like during the startup of spring kicks, I think during the startup of Chinese get-ups also, you get the old float. But not, not during holding back anymore. Or standing straight up. Uh, this is also a counter hit. Okay, it's still a counter hit string. It does a lot less damage. If I'm not mistaken, in Tekken 6, this shit did 80 damage. And Tekken 6 health bars were, I think, shorter than this game. This shit was crazy. <laughs> but it is a, a high in the end. One of those highs that look like it should be a mid. It's a high in the end, and I think it's also unsafe. Yeah, negative 16 on block. The whole string. So anyway, mid-mid. Negative 11. Negative 9 on the first hit. Negative 11 on the second. And then we have a high on the last hit. That's negative 16. Oops. Okay, the second hit on normal hit makes the third combo. Oh, it jails? It jails, you cannot duck the third hit. So you gotta punish it with negative 16. I was trying to see if I could sidestep. <laughs> what do you know? What do you know? Oh. Damn, too slow, too slow, Bob. 18 frame launcher, too slow. 16 frames is good, if you're ready for it. Side step to your left. All right, you're not going to see this drink too much in the neutral, but it's good to know. Yeah, it jails, but it's negative 16. Counter hit confirmable? Let's see. What makes it counter hit confirmable? Is it one of those where you're trying to say that it's slow enough that... 17 frames? It's slow enough that... Uh, oh, the second hit doesn't combo? Is that what you're getting at? Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying.
I admit to cheating there because of the counter hit thing popping up in the left corner of my eye. <laughs> if only that happened during like Street Fighter during matches, right? It'd be so much easier to counter hit confirm. Uh, the idea is the moment you verify that the second hit connects, you could do the third hit to combo. But you put, leave yourself at negative 11 if you stop at the second hit. Important for his wall game. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that is a wall splat too. Damn, that's a lot of damage off of a wall splat. And he does a really high damage wall combo on top of that. 54 damage. Imagine this for Tekken 6. He gets like 80 damage wall splat. <laughs> <laughs> and then he does the old back dash this, dive forward one into the fucking, the kicks, what are those kicks, whatever those stupid ass kicks were, I don't remember the kicks, anyway, let's test the tracking on that thing, So we're getting that bootleg tracking. It's not really tracking now. This is one of those that has a wide hitbox, so you have to time it weird. I right, see. Because he's at negative, uh, when I'm putting myself at negative three, it's kind of sort of tracking. But not really. <laughs> this is one of those things. I'm sure Lily will clear that no problem. Uh, in case you're wondering, despite his looks, Bob is not considered a wide character. He's considered average as far as movement, like sidestepping goes. His sidestep is average. I think Jin has trouble sidestepping shit that Bob can sidestep. <laughs> like maybe Bob, I bet you, you know what? Let's test one thing for Bob here. This might prove my point. Either that or I'll prove myself wrong. We'll see. Where is... Now, for those of you that don't know... About fucking fighting Leo... There is this very, very obnoxious and abusable string that Leo has. Back 1-4. It's like an elbow into a knee. Uh, it is a counter hit launcher and on block Lil is like at plus 9 or something to force the uh, K and K mix ups This shit and then on counter hit it's like Easy confirm, right? So everybody well just about everybody has ways to get around that knee That knee cannot be it can be delayed I think but it comes out sl that slow in general You can't make it come out fast as a string Okay, now Bob is on the gin level. He uh, he can't sidestep it up close. Let's see about far away. Yeah, so Bob is like on that gin shit. Jin has to use uh, back one demon stance, crouching demon stance, whatever CDS to get around that. But I know Bob has something. Yeah, he does. Oh well, so Bob's options are kind of weak because it's just that. It's just backspin blow. Knock this could down back to that knee and avoid it. Knock is also just sidestep, the sidestep left. Most characters can sidestep left. So Bob is one that cannot. Not even at the tip? I'm surprised. Man, not even at the tip, huh? Oh well, fuck Bob. Claudio could hop kick it. <laughs> That's funny. If Leo just stops at back one, um, it's negative 11. And I think it's 18 frame startup. So back one into back one is easy counter hit bait. Leo doesn't get shit. She cancels back one forward to a cross dash. Correct. That's just the putting the fear into your heart. The back one four cross dash. If you're freezing, and I, I'm definitely guilty of freezing up after that, too. Uh, anybody with a backswing blow could backswing blow that knee. And most characters could sidestep left.
Nina has to sway back. Yeah, it's weird. It's not about the size of your sidestep, really, when it comes to back one four. It's weird. It doesn't make much sense. Alright. Uh, did I miss any questions, by the way? Anybody, uh, if anybody asks anything, feel free to ask again if I missed it. Brian is fucked? Doesn't Brian have, like, uh, not a back scene blow, but a move that kind of makes him move back and forward? Like an elbow? I don't know. I lost track of Brian's moves a long time ago. Uh, Swigger so takes you out of that shit with a sidestep right. You sure he's sidestepping right? I'm pretty sure you're supposed to sidestep left. Well, I tried sidestep right anyway, and it didn't work. But, whatever. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to sidestep left. Maybe some guys could go in either direction. I don't know. Alright, so we went through back one plus two, one two. Next we got back three four, which is the back row. Nothing much to say about this. You can chase him down and punish him. Even this. Negative 23 on hit. You can chase that down. So, like, some people like to start the route with that shit, right? Oh, no. It's... Right? He recovers crouching off of that row, by the way. See? See? You could punish that shit. Depending on your character, you could totally punish that shit. You gotta be ready for it, sure, because you have to chase it down pretty fast, but whatever. Uh, what we got? Up back three. Ah, another launcher. Maybe not. Maybe not a launcher. <laughs> Alright, so what's the deal with this move? Negative 15 on block. Same thing on counter hit. It says here in RB Norway, if the first hit connects only, it's a juggle? Good luck getting that, ha getting, good luck getting that to happen. Let's see. Maybe this will do it. Oh, yes. There you go. So it's not going to happen if they sidestep. This is a shitty move. Which means if they were to exchange hits with you, it would also be a... Uh... Well, what do you know? It's 15 frames. <laughs> 15 frames, huh? Well, there's a 15 frame punish, I guess. But then you have this at 15 also. So it's like, okay. <laughs> whoop the fucking do right? I just realized something. Another good thing about this, if you want to get gimmicky for a moment here. You better do the martial law, right? So if they wake up, I don't know if you could time that good enough to like beat out wake up kicks. This input is awkward. Nah, not even instantly. Damn, not even a whiff punish? Hey, oh, eat shit! That's supposed to be a counter hit combo. Fucking what? Ah, oh, poor Bob. You can't do the gimmick. Well, you can. You just have to hold the charge. You can't force it as a mix-up. Like, right away. You have to, like, let him get up and then be in a neutral situation and then force the mix-up. 
but you can't block while you're holding a supercharge. You're right, Kenny. That's why I like. What's up, AK? What up? That move is the god of Okazima. Which move? Down one plus two. Uh, down one plus two, two one. Up four three. Oh, you mean up back three? That? Is it because uh? Oh, it hits grounded? Oh, hey, this is useful, this move. But it's negative 15. If they, That's negative 15, man. Negative 15. If you're going to hit grounded with something, you got back three now. What if that make it obsolete? You got back three, which has a counter hit launcher attached to it, and is also negative 15. And does more damage if it just hits them grounded. Oh, okay. Got you. So at the wall, he gets both of the hits. It's like uh, Lars's down three, one plus two. The kick into like the fucking double palm shit he does. It's like that, right? All right, I got you. All right. I mean, calling it like a god of Okazim has probably been much. I mean, even if both hits, connect, both hits connect at the wall, it's like, it's not that big a deal. Now, if it causes goofy-ass shit to happen, if you were to tech off of it, that's a different story. Okay. Uh... And tag too. All right. Well, maybe not so much anymore. Oh, I see. Good. Fuck that. Tag two sucked. Glad that shit's gone. But while we're here, give me a wall combo, somebody. Somebody, give me a walk combo. What was it? Uh, somebody said something last time about the first three hits of his 10 hit combo. Give me forward two, three. Back two, two, down there. You mean up back three, AAK? Damn, he's, uh, he recovers too slow to do the full back dash, right? Wow, it doesn't flow? There it is. Damn, that's harder to do than it used to be. Those are different moves. They just look the same. Okay. Seven one. 
<sighs> 72, okay. Low wall here, right? But somebody last time said something about a uh, his 10 hit string. Okay. Oh, I knew the last hit. Is that guaranteed in the end? That's guaranteed. That looks like it's guaranteed. Uh, no muscle. I mean, I guess I lost a lot of my definition. I'm doing it because it's hot, but you know. Just because I don't have anything to uh, show off doesn't mean there's no muscle here. You know what I'm saying, amigo? I just got to get to working off again. Working out, rather. Working off, baby. But it's fucking hot, so. Believe me, it ain't about showing off. I don't want to be a douchebag like you gym heads. I just lost a lot of my definition because I've been eating like a fucking slob. Uh... But the, the other one did more damage. Why would you? Why would you not do the? Uh... Because this is one, two, three, four. You can't, you have to do the fourth hit. So that's guaranteed. It is. Okay, there you go. 24 damage. All right. Uh, you only want to do... Uh, Alright. Yeah, 24 damage. Alright. Yeah, no. AK, it's not up back three. You keep saying up back three. It's down three plus four. That's why you keep confusing me. It's down three plus four. Not up back three. Up back three is trash. Down three plus four is good. There you go. See, this is what I know about this move. Yes. Both hits always come. It's like, that's what I meant, where it's like Lars is down four or down three, one plus two, whichever three this shit is. At angles, you can roll out of down three plus four. All right, got it. So that means it's hitting later at angles.
90 damage. Eh, don't worry about it. It's more important to see how much damage he gets off of an up-close wall splat. Wall carry wall splat is fine and all. But it's much more important for Bob to know how much damage he gets off of a straight-up wall splat. When he's, uh, hits you with something like this. Because that's what's going to happen more often than not for you. That or Cracker Jacker or whatever, right? I just wanted to see the bigger numbers. That's why I was doing it off of regular Cracker Jacker. Uh, Alright, so up back three is trash. I can't think of any good reason to use this move. It pushes back, but he's negative 24. And if the second hit gets blocked, he's negative uh, 15. So pretty much just about always going to get launched for doing it. Alright, next we got up one plus two. I guess I should test the track and all that shit. Hold on. Oh yeah, we saw this already. Man, that's only off of a jab. Okay, off for the other direction, it's a little better. So this is like a sidestep launcher. <laughs> Fucking weird ass move, man. What a dumb ass move. Maybe that's some sort of Oki or something. Uh, okay. Anyway. So, we have up 1 plus 2, which goes airborne. It doesn't say on what frame, though. If he goes forward, he goes into the roll. You go backwards with the roll. Or you could do this uh, up 1 plus 2, 1 to do that weird-ass punch. <laughs> so this punch is negative 9 with knockback so the only thing I have to wonder about this is how good of a low crush is it otherwise it's just kind of gimmicky right I'm assuming he recovers crouch oh yuck he recovers look at how slow he recovers shit this shit is stupid man what is this what, what good is this this used, did this used to bound? I saw Rick the Rilla use it recently. I was like, why did he do that move? Like, <laughs> was that an accident? Yeah, it's a shitty move, but I want to check something about it anyway. Yeah, it doesn't even crush lows faster than the hop kick. That shit's trash. I guess you could use it at the wall. I think it used to bound, didn't it? Wasn't it used during certain juggles or something? I think. I don't know. I might be remembering some fucking nonsense. It is getting hotter in here, though. You hear that loud droning noise in the background? That's my air conditioner. It's not good enough right now, I'll tell you that much. Alright, so... It's the humidity that's fucking with me. Next, that move sucks. Next, up equals four. Ooh, this move. I think this move is good. I think this move is good. Let's see. Uh, this is negative four to plus two. Force crouch on block. 
Yeah, that forces crouch on block. Uh, so a lot of active frames, seven active frames. It just definitely hits grounded. And then on a hit, it's uh, plus six to plus 12. Oh, I keep doing that by accident. Oh, jungle starter. This move is cheap. This move is fucking cheap. Man, that float is really weird. Not enough of a dash. Yeah, see that float? The way his legs go up in the air like that? It's probably, you know, it's definitely a better juggle, I'm sure, but... Whatever the juggle is, you're gonna wanna figure it out for that, because this shit is good. It also hits grounded, I think, right? See, I knew this shit was cheap. Just looking at it, you could kinda tell. Look at that. Ooh, look at this shit. Switching sides. Switching sides, man. Uh. You could go into a full crouch low if they stay grounded. I mean, not always, but depending on how close you are. Mm -mm. You get a 4 1 pursuit to screw after the airborne. Full cross down forward three. That's what I did. Oh, you mean going forward with it? <clears throat> oh, the generic. Because that's not generic. But that is. Okay, got it. I don't know what the best juggle would be. Look up a juggle video, but this move, uh, this move is fucking good, really good. Moves him forward a lot too, which is good because it's not an up forward input. Up forward gets you something else. That's the old wall combo. That's up forward one plus. Okay, three plus four. That's the old Tekken six wall combo right there. It was down forward one to that shit. So yeah, this move is cheap. As far as getting on the block at late, I mean, if they happen to tech in certain situations, like at the wall, and the fact that it hits grounded on top of that, it's like Jin's axe kick, except it's not plus on block normally. It's fucking good. That's a good move, man. That's a really good move. <clears throat> good Oki too. Hell, hell, I would think about using that before using this. The only thing is that this is much faster. That is much slower. It's 24 frames. Alright, so. According to this shit. It's a. It jumps on frame 13, so it's not a great low crush. But yeah, that's about all there is to say about that. It's just the tracking, I guess. So no tracking, that's expected. <laughs> Let me get him to tech. Oh. Damn, inputting it is weird. It's not, this is, because this is not really the kind of situation you would use it in. Like, as an Oki tool to, like, get him to block it late, you know? You would use it off of certain knockdowns, whatever they may be. A 
I still got negative four on that one. But that is definitely a good timing to, like, interrupt them if they press anything, I'm pretty sure. That looked good, at least. Doing it out of a run is very awkward. Let's see if you could just like, do a um, back swing blow out of that. Doesn't look like it. You'd have to crouch cancel first. <clears throat> All right, next on the list is up three. Doesn't launch unless it's counter hit, I'm assuming. Not even, no. And up three is negative 13. Damn, doesn't even push back much. So his up three is useless. It's not like Lily's. Uh, his up forward three, of course, is much better. So his hot kick is uh, slower. Five frames slower than the average hot kick. 20 frames. But he moves forward a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot with his hot kick. He moves forward quite a bit. Not only that, I think he ducks for a quick moment. So he goes under jabs sometimes. The animation, he's like, Ugh, before he jumps. So it's definitely one of those fucking lame-ass hop kicks, right? And it does 20 damage instead of your typical hop kick that does like 13, 14, maybe 15 damage. Well under 20. Yeah, his hop kick goes over a lot of shit. I would hope so. It's a hop kick. It should go over a lot of shit. <laughs> the cool thing about having this much range on a hop kick is... Uh, you can feel confident in, like, with punishing, let's say, a snake edge. Because you know how snake edges tend to be when they're spaced. They tend to recover quick. They're slow moves, but they tend to recover quicker than it seems because they have such long range. Then you try to with punish the snake edge. You're always just a bit too slow. Uh, with Bob, you could be standing here. You see a snake edge coming. You could just input that shit and be relatively confident that it's going to jump over the snake edge and hit him. Relatively so. Not always, though. <laughs> Alright, what's next? Uh, I don't think it's hot kick tracks, right? Alright, so his hot kick does not track. Alright, so next on the list is up forward four or up four. And uh, this is a juggle tool, right? I don't think this is used outside of a juggle. Did this used to bound? He probably has better options than that now, right? That's a spike. Man, you don't even need a dash for that, it looks like. Never mind. What a weird move. Is there any use for this move now? This used to be like a juggle. The first kick at least used to be a juggle, so I know that. But like, what juggles would he use this now? And what juggles? It does such low damage. 14 damage. Uh, I'm looking here. Negative 9. Plus 2 on hit. The second hit. Uh, plus 4 force crouched on hit. Knocks down on counter hit. Use four for alternative floor breaker at the wall. All right. <laughs> Alternate.
Alternative floor breaker at the wall. Yeah, you use four four three, which looks similar for early screw combos. Ah. Uh. All right. Bob has a lot of that going on, right? Similar looking moves. Similar. <laughs> yeah, so that's that was three different moves right there. They all like have similar looking startup shit. All right, so I don't know what the point is. It doesn't even combo on normal hit. It is zero on block. The second kick, which is nice. But, it, yeah. I think somebody wants to wish me happy birthday. I'll be right back. I need another minute here. We got to order some food. I'll be right back, guys.
I'm back. Sorry about that. People insisted that we order food, so you fucking dragged me into that shit. Especially since I live with a diabetic father, we couldn't wait on it, so I have to order the food right now. Did I miss any questions earlier, by the way, guys? If I didn't answer a question earlier, feel free to ask it again. And I will answer it if I know the answer. If I don't, then uh, I don't know. Something, something, something. I got that Samoan hair. My island roots. Get to my eyes, though. I gotta fucking... <laughs> Behind the ears, there we go. Oh, my music ended? Oh, no, it didn't end. Oh, sorry. Okay. How's the net code in this game on PC? It is fine. I will tell you that the, um, on certain computers, this game does have some issues, mine included. And it's not because of the hardware, I'll tell you that right now. So, like, uh, the FPS tends to dip for me. I have to do weird shit to get decent FPS. And the graphics settings are very low, which is why it looks like shit. I mean, my PC isn't amazing, but it's good enough to run Tekken at better than, than the settings that I have it on. I'll tell you that right now. It should be. All right, did I get rid of the BRB? I did. Hey, thanks, Liver Slapper. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I figure I'll celebrate it by showing off my flabby arms. Like that one guy that was talking shit in the chat earlier. Who was that guy? Who was that guy? Thanks for the follow. Who was that guy? Did my chat scroll too far past him? Oh, Slayer Hatch, Automod. Sorry about that. Fucking Automod. I'm unable to turn that trash off. Damn, my chat went all the way back there. Damn, son. Tips to re reaching Vanquisher. Damn, I don't know if that person's still around. Oh, uh, somebody answered him already. Don't lose. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Bob is just fucked up. Blah, blah, blah. Any other questions? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, damn, this goes all the way back to the wall splatting stuff. Big boy damage. Okay, guys. We're back. Hey, Gray, what's going on? We're back. What's up, Psycho? Thank you. Ah, damn it, now I have three of these videos I've done. That I now I have to edit parts out of because of these fucking breaks and shit. And this is gonna be another one that I have to edit a part out of before I put it up on the YouTube. Oh, all of a sudden I can't move. There it is. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Sloppy movement. Hold up. Realign myself. Much better. I'll show you how important it is to align your legs properly when you're playing on stick. Okay, so, we were talking about up forward 4-4, four, four, and I was noticing how it's zero on block. But it pushes back a lot, so the zero on block, it's like fucking whatever, right? Alright, there is a gap in there that lets people swing to get counter hit, so that's good, I guess. Yeah, this move is kind of whatever. It's not super awful, but it's not super useful either. It's the kind of move that is not so bad on block. Like, it being zero on block means you could, uh, 
catch people that don't know any better. You know, for example, this is safe on block, right? If people don't know the bomb matchup, they're probably not going to be seeing this move that often. Even people that do know the bomb matchup probably won't see this move using the neutral that often. You do the first hit enough, you'll probably catch somebody with the second hit counter hit, which gives you a spike, a ground, uh, ground, grounded situation into a free hit, right? And then, then they know, oh shit, he has that second hit with counter hit properties. Then the next time they'll block it, and then it's like zero on block, and you're you could be way back here, so you could bait a whiff and then launch them. So it's not useless. It's just it's just one of those things. It's like that shouldn't be one of your go-to moves. But it's not so useless that you can never make it useful. You know what I'm saying? Keep that in your back pocket. It's one of those instances of like everybody knows Bob shit. Everybody that's played older Tekken games, because Bob is has been one of the best characters in the game for a while, right? Until this game. So everybody kind of knows the main Bob shit. So having something that they don't see every once in a while in your back pocket is nice. That's not like useless. You feel me, Bruce? So you can use that moving that way. Alright, so next we got Cracker Jacker. Up for one plus two, one plus two. What's that new one called? I see Cracker Jacker. What did you call me? Cracker ter Terriata? Terriata. So Cracker Jacker is his 16 frame Punisher, 40 damage, hit wall splats. Uh, they nerfed this in Tag 2. In Tekken 6, the first hit was safe. In Tag 2, they made the first hit unsafe. I think it was negative 12 in Tag 2. Well, either way, it says here negative 11 for the first hit by itself now. You could delay the second hit of the belly, the Cracker Jacker version. Uh, but it is launch punishable. So you gotta be careful with this move. This is one of those moves that is just slow enough that you could kind of confirm it. But I don't think you could confirm it in a regular neutral. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. Let's see. Maybe that is confirmable. Maybe, uh, maybe I mean, uh. I Now, I'm not good at hicker firms, guys. You know this by now, if you've been watching me for a while. But I think if you're good at hicker firms, you might be able to make this work. Hmm. That's a big risk if you fuck up the hicker firm. What's up, chat? Uh. Uh, you know low parry as a read or a low parry as streams coming, generally speaking, fuzzy way. What are you asking? Uh, I'm super new. I picked it up yesterday. I don't know. What did I miss here? Did I miss something? Uh, thanks, Rosa Zerker. Thanks, Pressure God. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks, Chad. How do I low parry? Okay, somebody answered that, I'm assuming. I'm super new. I picked it up yesterday. Yeah, you press down the sword. Uh, Grave, it's only risky if you hold it for a really long time. You could do a low parry like that. Low parry to stab block. You don't have to fully commit to the low parry. Like, uh, let me give you an example here. Let me just look up some moves here. This is 16 frames, right? Um, 19. Twenty. Uh, well, 60 seems to be as fast as it gets for Bob, right? And then hop kick, right? I'll give you a good example. Was that a dash forward first? Okay, good. See? You don't have to fully commit to a low parry. Oh, I ain't holding enough there. If only I lowered just a little bit faster. I'll give you a better example, just, just for a real good visual here. Let's do... Even though that's not a low. It works on crowd shots also.
So the key thing to know about second is, I don't know if you've played 2D Fighters, uh, Grave. And a lot of 2D Fighters, let's just say Street Fighter 4 and 5, right? When you forward dash and back dash in those games, uh, those things you cannot cancel. You can't cancel cross into standing instantly in, 2D, in any 2D Fighter, though. Any good one, at least, right? But, like, stuff like forward dash and back dash, you can't cancel instantly out of in Tekken, that is not the case. There are, uh, like, a small amount of frames in regards to sidesteps that you can't cancel out of, especially in this one. They nerfed the sidesteps a little bit since the older games. But any sort of forward movement, back movement, standing, crouching, crouching to standing, back and forth, that's all instantaneous. Instantaneous. All of it in Tekken. I could dash. I could back dash. I could cancel the back dash sidestep. I could cancel the back dash and crouch, which is why back dash canceling is possible in the first place. That's what you're doing. You're back. You're canceling the back dash with a crouch. That's why it looks like that. You can barely notice it. You can barely even see him crouching if you do it well enough. You don't even see like you see him like just kind of wiggle back. It's funny looking, right? And uh, what I was doing there would be known as fuzzy. Good shit, Grave. I hope you have fun with it. So, yeah. That's that. Um, so, I was talking about Cracker Jacker, right? So, yeah. 60 frame Punisher. Uh, pretty solid with Punish. Look at the range on this shit. About two back dashes. Young P is live. Yeah, about two back dashes for Bob is the limit on this. But a little more than that. Uh, a little more than that, he still gets it. But a third back dash is going to whiff. All right. Yeah, just a little over two back dashes worth of uh, range on Cracker Jacker, which is really good. Also, it's a headbutt. So generic counters do not work. Generic reversals do not work. Geese's will, obviously, and like parries will work. But your standard Asuka counter, this is one of your ways to beat that. Cracker Jacker. Because it's a headbutt. The standard reversals, counters, whatever, the generic ones, they don't work on headbutts. They don't work on elbows. They don't work on knees. They don't work on tails if Roger were around. Same goes for low parry. Same rules apply low parry, by the way. If there's like a headbutt that's a low, low parry will not work. If there's a knee that is a low, low parry will not work. There's also other special instances of like running moves that you cannot counter. Like Dragon Ball's while running too, I think. A standard counter does not work on that. So, I don't know, we got that out of the way. Uh, first hit is only negative three. I don't think this thing tracks. I don't remember it tracking. But I always gotta double chest, double check, if you will. Check your answers, right? Before the big final. Okay, um, so yeah, now in this game they gave him a new follow-up, which is mid-high. This does not jail. So, it's a, still a natural combo. It does waltz back because it causes the spin. Um, and it's a counter hit juggle starter on the second hit. Unfortunately... Well, you could delay it. You can't visually delay the move, but you could delay when you input the four. And it definitely will interrupt people who try to swing after the first hit. It's nice that it has that counter hit property. Yeah, see? Nice. All right, that's a good move. Good move, good move. The mid does not have any counter hit properties, though. But it is very delayable. See, it just knocks you back. But it's 30 damage on counter hit. But it is super unsafe. Bob cannot launch it. It's negative 17. One frame away from launch for Bob. But he can punish it with itself. Oops, not that.
Force's fastest launcher is that, so cannot launch it on block. Uh, MP generally break is the same as the input for the throw. So if the throw is yeah, general rule of thumb, general. Grave, what you want to look at for throws, Grave? What are you guys selling him? Uh, that's a lot. I'm not gonna read all that. Uh, Grave, you look at the animation. Always, always look at the animation. Now here's the thing. For generic throws, they change it in this game so you can input. This is a generic throws. You could uh, input either punch by itself to break them. S still. Get into the habit of looking at the hands. The only time this rule does not always apply is when you're playing against King. As far as I know, he's the only one in this game that breaks that rule. Uh, there is a Nina throw that is unbreakable. Uh, her back sway, and it looks like a 1 plus 2 break, and it starts her chain throw. That's not breakable. Uh, but in general, there's also one other unbreakable throw, uh, Kazumi. But Kazumi doesn't use the regular throw animation for it. She does a flying, like, she uh, cocks her hand back and grabs forward, and it's a mid-grab. It's unbreakable. That's not like a normal throw, though. Same thing with Akuma's demon flip grab. That's not a normal throw. We're talking about just everybody's standard throws. These throws. You want to look at the hand. You see how his left hand is... You see how his left hand is reaching out further? You see that? That's That means one break. So no matter what, you should never be asking, Hey, how do I break this throw? And you ask about throw. That should never be a question. That's not... Because the answer is always, look at the hand. That's a one break. Look at the hand. That's a one break. Left hand leads. Look at the hand. That's a two break. And then... What is this throw? Uh, there it goes. Okay, so... Once again, look at the hands. Evenly. They're evenly reaching out. That's a one plus two break. That is the answer. How do you practice this? Well, repeat action. Pick a character that has actual command grasp so one, one and two. Dragon off. Uh, Jin. Jin has all of them. Uh, Devil Jin. Uh, other characters I don't fucking remember. King. Thank you, Grave. And you know what? I'll go a step further for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Grave. I appreciate it. And for those of you who are wondering, you don't have to donate to ask questions, but I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> so, like, my recommendation is to start with Dragonoff. Pick whoever you're going to pick. Start with Dragonoff. I should probably make a video about throw break practicing because everybody asks although I, I always assumed that there was a lot of videos about that out there already anyway uh, maybe I'm wrong I don't know now check it out I want you to understand something grave when you look at a character's move list the order of the moves the first two moves are going to be your rage stuff always. The first one or two moves, because some characters don't have rage drives, like uh, Akuma and Geese and Eliza. But it's always going to be rage stuff, right? Rage art, rage drive. And then it's going to be like jab stuff. When you scroll all the way down, eventually, it's going to be like unique counter stuff if they have it, but generally it's going to be throws. It's going to be all throws in the bottom. King... Like, the bottom half of his move list are all of his grabs and chain grabs and chain grab extensions. Like, straight up. Like, 80 of his 180 moves are all grab stuff. The important thing to note, they usually start after the 10 hit combos. Sometimes they start after a taunt, I think. The important thing to note is everybody has generic throws. What do I mean by generic throws? 1 plus 3 and 2 plus 4. Generic throws, when you don't hold forward, are 12 frames. When you hold forward, you add three frames. So they're 15 frame startup, but they track. These do not track. Without holding forward, your throws can be sidestepped. When you hold forward, they come out slower, they can't be sidestepped. These grabs in this specific Tekken game, you break them all the same way. But they still have the old animation where you had to break them with one if it's one plus three, or two if it's two plus four. Hand reaching forward. 
What they did in this game is they made that either one or two break and command grabs, which are grabs that reach out as one break and two break that are unique. For example, Dragon Ball's forward one plus four and it's forward two plus three. These, um, you have to break them with one or two. Any sort of command grab that's outside of the input of a generic throw like this is going to have a unique throw break, one or two, or forward forward one plus two. These are the big three you want to break for Dragon Off. Now, uh, I know about Dragon Off specifically, these two grabs are 11 frames startup instead of 10 frames. Holding forward doesn't do anything with, with uh, command grabs unless it's a uh, uh, generic throw. Generic throws the only time holding forward changes the speed. For command grabs, they come out when they come out, and that's it. So when you go over here and, and record, you, the CPU opponent action one, you want to change that to repeat action. These top three slots, move lists, right? Move lists. You want to go to move lists. Make this one of them. The second one, make the other grab one of them. That grab. Third, make that grab. You see this 100 here that you could change in increments of 10? That's the uh, rate. That's like, you know, because it's all RNG between these three moves. It's going to be the frequency. Make them all the same. Now, here you have interval between action. I have a set to short. That's going to make you grab, like, a lot faster. Start slow. Start normal. Don't go long. Start normal. And then on the bottom left, uh, my stuff is probably blocking it, but it says press the back button plus the B button to uh, play. So you play it back, he's going to be reaching. That's a two break. That's a two break. That's a one break. That's a two break. One plus two. This is what I want you to do. Anybody that wants to practice throw breaking, start like this. All the way across like this. Just input it after you see it. No matter how slow it is, get into the habit of inputting the correct throw break from far away. Keep moving forward. One plus two. One. The key is wait, re, uh, react. Do not predict. React. Even if you're inputting it too slow and you still get thrown, that's a step in the right direction. You keep doing that, eventually you're going to input it faster and faster, and you're going to break the throws. Right? Now, the other important thing here is you want to switch sides. The cool thing about doing this with Dragunov is most of his grabs, if you let him grab you, it's going to switch sides for you. Not that one. His two grab does, though. Wait for his two grab. Oh, there. That one happened to do it that time because the camera man is drunk or whatever. See? And then when you hear it, the lead hand is different. Because in Tekken, every character stands at orthodox stance. As far as, like, boxing goes and shit. Left hand always leads. For most characters. Not every character. Sorry. Unless uh, it's like bears who just kind of stand with their hands to their side. Most characters are showing you their chest if they're on the One Piece side. They're leading with their left. Right? Huarang is one of the, is I think the only character in the game right now that could uh, switch to a uh, softball. And he has a different moveset when he does that, actually. Right foot forward, they call it. Left foot forward, right foot forward. That's just a Taekwondo thing in general. For people who practice Taekwondo, they know about that shit. Uh, pretty much everybody else, it's always going to be orthodox right hand power left hand forward and the reason uh that's why it's important to like switch sides to break throws because it's going to visually look kind of different when they do it that way you know and then eventually you start to get the hang of it make this fast or short rather oh i did one plus two there every once in a while put like a half hour into this Every once in a while, you don't have to do it every day. It's gonna take, it's gonna build up eventually, and then eventually it'll just be muscle memory. <sighs> Refusing to do anything other than the two break. You saw that shit? I was, I put it wrong, but that was a one plus two. Any questions? Hey, King of Zay, thank you very much. Once you use up your chance, you get thrown. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. If uh, he did a 1 plus 2 throw, and I input it a 1, and then try to input 1 plus 2 after, I think it's too late. Yeah, it's too late. 
The window is wider in this game. That's really what makes it easier, in my opinion. The window is much wider in this game. It's not just the generic throws are one and two break. It's that the window to break throws way wider than they've been outside of Tekken Revolution. That's what really makes it much easier, in my opinion. Hey, thank, uh, thank you, S. Maverick. And thanks, everybody, for the birthday wishes. Thank you, everybody, for whoever subbed, whoever donated. I greatly appreciate it, you guys. Much love, much love. And uh, those of you watching, too, you don't have to sub or donate or anything like that. I appreciate it. So Drax, Lex is a grab. Oh, yeah, that Dragonov's Lex is a grab is unbreakable. I already switched characters, so I'm not going to go back to it. Dragonov has a grab with up forward, three plus four, where he jumps up with his legs toward you. And then if you stay standing, he, like, uh, grapevines you with his uh, with his legs. And then he, like, pulls on your legs and breaks your legs. That's an unbreakable throw also. But it's, like, much slower. It's like you can react and duck. But it, it's not bad. Also, you can't really punish him with much out of that. You can't flow him or anything like that inside. If you try to flow him, you're going to wall standing right into the grab. Alright, have fun, dude. All right, so last move I was talking about. Uh, oh, yeah, Cracker Jacker with the kick. So, yeah, Cracker Jacker with the kick, that's a really good uh, inclusion for Bob. He didn't get that in Tag 2, did he? I can't remember. I think that's new in this game. I think that's a Tekken 7 edition. That's a really good move. Also, you guys probably know this already. It's a Corkscrew in Jungles also. It's a Corkscrew, it's a Wall Splat, it's a Counter Hit Jungle Starter. Uh, but it takes up your because uh, usually when you see a launcher that does that it does the core screw that takes up your core screw You're not gonna get a second one. That's a general rule of thumb ah, What's another one I could do There you go see no core screw and that is a core screw because you were wondering Well, that was actually a reset, but still that is a core screw uh, we know that the belly flop, or the, sorry, the headbutt doesn't track, and Cracker Jacker is negative 17. That kick is actually negative one? Negative one? Damn, that's really good. You see when you have these moves where like, oh, the high has counter hit properties, could duck, whatever. They'll make it like negative four or five, sometimes worse, but still safe. This is negative one. You could totally move around and hit buttons after this shit. That's good. That's really good. That's a good move. That's a good uh, inclusion for Bob. See, I like that. I like that they nerfed him, but they still gave him a new useful tool. Just be careful because they can duck it. All right, so next on the list is up forward 3 plus 4. I talked about this earlier. This was his old wall combo. Up forward 3 plus 4, 4 has a kick in the end. Low high and then low high high if you do the extra kick. Um... Oh, wow, this is another... This is a low-high natural combo. Up 4, 3 plus 4 by itself. Low-high natural combo. Negative 4 on hit. Uh, Alright. Does not combo on counter hit. 21 frame startup. It's pretty slow. So this is a tailspin. Corkscrew, if you will. That was a reset, but still, you see that it's a corkscrew. Now, I don't know when you would use this in a juggle, because the uh, outside of the last hit, the third hit, the damage is pretty low each hit. It's 10, 12, and then 20. Okay, and it's just a regular-ass knockback. Uh... It's like that Jack grab where he belly flops you. You can react to those. Oh, yeah. Uh, down 14 plus 4 is similar to this move, but it launches on normal hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I talked about that last time. You're right. The whole point of this move, though, is like I said, it is uh, up 14 plus 4, is that it used to be a um, wall combo. But you know what? It's not useless. Right? Look at this. Look at look at the damage on his lows. We got 17. 
11, 14. Alright? And then if you want damage. Sorry, not that. Outside of Hell Sweet, 26. So now we have an in between that is launch punishable. Natural combo, but uh, it's uh, negative four. He's right in their face. Uh, but it is 22 damage. But it's risky in a different way. This is just super risky on block, where you get blocks done. This is low high. But then it becomes, if he commits to the third hit, it's going to be very difficult to while standing punish that. So we got like the asterisk in regards to punishing it. Right? Oh. Alright, so that's an easy punish, right? And of course you can also low parry it. But then if he does the third hit, Right? I should make a block after that, just in case. See? I tried to hop kick, that's why I got tailspin. Look at that, 15 frames didn't work. 14 frame while standing didn't work. 11 frames didn't work. Look at that, I can't, I can't find a gap for 11 frames. You can't wall standing it at all if he does that third hit. Wall standing gets blown up completely. I used to think it's wall standing 2 1, high crush, but this is proving me wrong. You know what, what high crush is for wall standing? I'm pretty sure Asuka's wall standing 3 is a high crushing launcher. So you have to wait for him to do the third hit and then you, go, you hit him with something. That's what you want to fucking do, right? If you have that sort of read, really fuck him up for it. Mm, 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 mm. Geese! I gotta go back to playing Geese. He was too fun. It's the best version of his theme song, too. I gotta turn this shit up. Uh, down four, three plus four, similar to this. Oh, yeah, saw that already. How's the low crush? Uh, according to this, it jumps on frame 24, so the low crush sucks. Still, it might still be good as a wall combo, but he has way better shit. We already established that. It's a little awkward to input, so it seems kind of obsolete as a wall combo. Maybe it re-splats? Let's see. If it re-splats, that's pretty good. Any tips on how to introduce lateral movement into my game? I'm pretty trash at stepping and knowing when to step things. Sure, hold on. I'll get to you in a second. Uh, Dre Dre. Let me just test this wall stuff out. Let's go with the faster recovery, right? The first two hits got a... Eh, I can't even talk. The first two hits did a resplat. If I could fit all three hits into the resplat, that could be good. Then the question is, do you sacrifice too much damage carrying off the wall with that like that? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's not great for that. Oh boy, you saw it turn him around. <laughs> yeah, so the old wall combo, like I said, was... Wow, I didn't even combo there. 
Alright, so it's not super great at the wall. Oh, let's test one more thing at the wall, actually. Let's turn off wake up. So if they were just to stay down, right? That would pick up off the floor. No. It only catches slump. It does not pick up off the floor. You still want down three plus four for that. Alright. Got it. <sighs> this is Geese's team. You gonna hate on Geese's team? You kidding me? Alright, hey, uh, Dre Dre, what character do you use? If you're still around. Dre Dre, who do you use? Feng King for the most part. Alright, let's go with King. Because Feng does all sorts of weird shit. Give me an example of a character that you have trouble stepping. Uh, I can't risk playing an anime theme song. I'll get my screen muted. And YouTube is a pain in the ass about the monetization. Do you have a uh, Dragon Off? All right, Dragon Off's a pain in the ass to sidestep in general. So what you need to know about Dragon Off specifically is that down two you cannot sidestep down two. You cannot sidestep. Down two. It tracks. It's basically treated like a homing move. No sidestepping down two. The other key thing you need to know about sidestepping against Dragonov though is down two is relatively slow. Thanks for the follow. Do you have an example of a mid that you have trouble sidestepping with Dragonov? Let's just say a mid poke. A specific mid poke? Like, do you have trouble sidestepping down forward one, for example? Or do you not? It's just general. Just general shit? Forward forward two. Well, alright. First, let's start with the poking. So the pokes are going to be faster than the low, always. So one thing you got to know is, first of all, you need to know in this game how to sidestep his down forward one. His down forward one is weird. Oh, that's the low. Okay, so King has to go left. What you need to know about down forward one, though, is... Um, down forward one to down forward one, generally you can't sidestep it. See? It's fucking weird. I don't know why. It's like very hard to do. You generally can't do it. But it, let's say he does it off of a jab. If he does it off of a jab, it's a tight window. But you could definitely go left. So now that we established that, let's say he decides I'm going to mix up jab with uh, after jab, a down forward one, and a down two. If you block the jab. If you block the jab, you could go left. Right? To, uh, to go around the down forward one. But the down two is going to beat you. The thing is, the down forward one comes out way faster than the, than the uh, down two, right? So what you can do is... It's a little hard. Wow, that's not 13. This is way harder to do in this game. I know what's in tag too. See, you need to drill shit like this in training mode. You can also obviously sidestep it to a hop kick. As long as you're not too slow with it. Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah, no. The hot kick won't crush in time for the low if you sidestep. So the thing about Dragunov is he's a pain in the ass in general. One of the reasons he's so good is because he's very difficult to sidestep in this game. He was not like this in Tag 2. And he was already good in Tag 2. Uh, I think this is a side effect of the nerfed sidestepping in this game. You see, I'm getting it a couple of times, but... I'm not getting the while standing four off of the whiff down forward one, though, because it's too slow. But you get the idea. So rule number one against Dragunov, you cannot sidestep down two, but you can sidestep into a crouch to block the down two after your sidestep. Rule number two for Dragunov, uh, down forward one, since if you block a down forward one and he doesn't another down forward one, you're not going to be able to sidestep that. But you can backdash that. Keep that in mind. His down forward one pushes you back a little bit. Rule number three for Dragunov. And this is universal. Forward forward moves. Any move that has the input forward forward before the attack. Realigns. Dashing in Tekken realigns. Sidestepping in Tekken realigns. So if a move has a sidestep input or a forward forward input. That means that if you want to sidestep the move. Assuming it's not a tracking move. If you want to sidestep it. You have to sidestep it later than usual. Forward, forward, two, for example. Now, this is me doing it instantly off of a jab. It appears to track to his right side really well in general. So you want to go to your right. Side step right, basically, right? But if he were to do this, I added a little bit of a dash. No good. So that means I have to do it later. So the same thing applies to his running too. His running too is very difficult to sidestep because he's running at you and it's very fast. So you need to find your timing. You need to find your opponent's timing and sidestep based on the timing. So now we know forward forward two, you go to your right. You just have to find the right timing to go right. And luckily you're using King and Feng so their sidesteps aren't terrible. They're not like Gigas, right? You can do this. It's not going to be off of a jab, obviously. This is just to help you get the timing. Look for, like, his dash. Alright, a little too late. You got to look at the startup of the dash. Look for the startup of the dash. Also, by the way, if you're going to sidestep with the intent of thinking a forward forward 2 is coming, you don't have to fully commit. Forward forward 2 is negative 12 on block. King gets that. I don't know what Feng gets. At least 1-2-2. Two, two. I know Feng has a 12 frame punish of some sort. It's not shoulder, right? But King gets back 1-2. So you could totally do sidestep block. And then just in case you end up blocking it, you get a back 1-2. So you're good. You don't have to fully come into the sidestep. Um, no problem. I thank you for that birthday. Can he extend the string, though, with 4-4-2? Four, four, what do you mean by extend? Uh, 442 is the end of the string unless he cancels it. Dragunov has a cancel. If he inputs 1 plus 2, he goes into that grab. That grab is a high. You could also break it with 1 plus 2. If he holds back after the cancel, 442, 1 plus 2, hold back. He's standing, and that's it. Are you thinking about this? Yeah. So, you'll see this. Uh, it happens often if Dragon Ball players mess up while running, too. They input the four just in case. That, that way you get that. The same thing applies. Any move that's linear it applies no matter what your character is. If you dash or sidestep or even hold back for a moment. Or just hold forward. You don't have to dash. Just hold forward for a moment. For a brief moment. You're constantly realigning. Your character automatically realigns. Doesn't matter if you're Bob, doesn't matter if you're King, doesn't matter if you're Gigas, doesn't matter if you're Dragonov, or Akuma, doesn't matter. Hey, thanks man, Kozu. Appreciate it. <laughs> Feliz Kupla on your way.
is that a mini OS? Yes, what I was showing you earlier was basically a mini OS. It's just size stepping drag is a nightmare. But uh, the OS I was showing you with Dragon Off is if you're in a situation where you're fighting against a character, let's say it's a string, and there's a gap in the string, if the low is slower than the mid, you can use that as an OS. Side step into low parry. Assuming the mid is uh, linear. That's not always the case. Now, if it's a situation where uh, the low is... Um, if it's a situation where the low is faster than the mid, you could OS a low parry into a stand block or a low block into a stand block. You could do that too. It's just a matter of finding out if there is that sort of gap. And then if there is that gap, test to see what could be delayed to mess with the gap. If anything could be delayed to mess with that gap, then you kind of, you know, you kind of have to guess. But if people aren't delaying it, like only the good players are going to delay it to mess with you that way. Like bad players are just going to pick mid versus low on their strings. And then you get to fuck with them. So yeah. Uh, we went through up forward 3 plus 4, 4. So it is basically like a low, a 22 damage low. It's a high, natural combo, but it is negative four. Negative four, he could still pretty much sidestep. So, it's not the end of the world. It's not negative five where you lose the ability to sidestep jabs for... E even Lily loses that ability. Any jack players in check? Can you hit confirm while standing three, two of them? That, I don't know. You'd have to ask the jack player. Uh, all right, so, funny that you asked about forward forward moves. Now we go to forward forward moves for Bob. Forward forward two. This is a classic, a bound move, but it's also good in a neutral. Look at that on block. They like get staggered back. We got a negative eight situation where Bob is spaced out quite well, quite well. How well? Well, let's see. Okay, not that well. And he, uh, he can't really space it out like he can with this because he moves forward. But he can do this. That's a classic Bob setup. She's cheap. Look at that whiffed. <laughs> oh, Bob does all sorts of weird ass shit sometimes. You could delay shit too to fuck with that though. Uh, see? Almost on reaction. Almost. Wow, no counter hit? How did I not counter it? <laughs> Ooh, this used to knock back on normal hit. That that uh that used to knock back on normal hit into a wall spot. It was really fucked up. His backspin blow. Only negative twelve now though. I think it was worse before. In second six. So yeah, anytime Bob creates space, you could like test test back dash, test uh any any character really, not just Bob. <clears throat> right? That's just a back bash. Look at that. It made the first jab whiff. So what happens if I were to back dash down forward too? <laughs> oh, not good. Oh, okay, so not good. Bob has above average jab range, so that's worth noting. Woo, thanks for the cheer. Dre, Dre, appreciate it. No, let's try it back that before that. Nope. Oh. Okay. Oh, there you go. It won't be super consistent, and it's going to depend on the character's jabs. But remember, most characters in the game don't have jab range as good as Bob. Like, Gigas has better, obviously. The best. But most characters... Bob is, like, near the top as far as jab range goes. So you do this kind of setup against most characters, they're going to get blown up if they try to... Yeah. It gets weird. Yeah. Maybe I could do that a little better. I did it too late there. The unfortunate thing about that is you have to delay it so and commit. You have to delay it and commit to the delay if they uh, to beat them out if they were to do jabs. Uh, 
Sensei. I learned how to get business for this. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Uh, like people say, they hit confirm law three plus four four. Oh, uh, yeah. It's probably one of those hit firms that isn't really viable on paper but works in practice. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. While standing three two. Yeah, people say that about Eddie's back three three, and uh, I think it's the same thing for that. I don't know if there's a real counter hit confirm going on there. It's weird. So anyway, four four two is a good move. This probably uh, breaks the floor. It definitely does. When you see that animation, you can pretty much guarantee that. It's one of those knockdowns where they have to hold back. Otherwise, he gets maybe a running 3 plus 4 or something. No, maybe not. Only at the wall, they'd have to hold back, I guess. Uh, it does wall splat, too. Also. So, it's a, yet another wall splat, too, for Bob. He has plenty. Right? So, good move. Good move. As far as the tracking goes, it probably has natural tracking to his right side, if I already guess, right? Oh, never mind. Oh, wow, to the left. To the left, to the left. To the left, to the left. So you have to go left toward the move. See, Tech and Breaking its own rules. But you do get his rear. Oh, camera switch. You get his rear. <clears throat> All right, so four four three is next. We talked about somebody mentioned this earlier. This is probably the one that you see in combos, right? Because it does more damage. Ah, yes, that's definitely the one because it knocks him up. Got it. All right, so four and four three. I think this is just a juggle too, but it is safe on block. It is safe on block. It is also eighteen frames, so it's not super slow. Like, uh, sorry, yeah, it's not super slow. Like four four four. Was it? Yeah. Um, four four two. By the way, is fourteen frames. That does not make it a fourteen frame Punisher. I mean, good luck if you think you're gonna try as a fourteen frame Punisher four and four move. But it is fast, so that's good. Uh, four, four, three. I think this is only useful as a juggle too, but it is safe phone block. So let's see. So now you're seven. Knocks back on counter hit, and does not knock back on regular hit. Plus four on regular hit, and does that weird ass float. According to RB Norway, it's airborne on frame number eight. One frame faster than hot kick, I think. Oh, it's got some natural tracking to his right side. Nice, Sue. All right, that's pretty much all there is to say about that move. What was uh, the pushback situation? Okay, so it's variable. If you get in the block the tip, he's got some more space created. See, a little bit more than that. Look at that. You get right in their face. It's a lot less space created. So he kind of lands where he kicks. Another setup for that. Damn, that back swing blow is cheap. This back swing blow is almost like a DP because he leans so low to the ground that he ducks a lot of mids also. He ducks a lot of mids, moves backwards, makes everything fucking whiff, and it's only negative 12. Shit, this shit, this shit is cheap. This is the kind of shit where it's like, I don't know if I want to swing at Bob right now. It's like, fuck. <laughs> uh, the music has been super low. I mean, if you guys want me to hire it. I'm like terrified of having the music overpower my voice because I've been very bad at that. All right, so. Forward, forward, three. We got that. Next, we got 444. Four, four. This is a homing move with a natural combo, right? 4444. Four, four, four. Uh, mid mid. Negative 13. The first kick is negative 9. 12 damage. 
14 frames jump. 14 frames to jump. Plus two on hits. 32 damage is nice. It is negative 13, but it is a fast mid homing move. Pretty f 22, relatively fast for a mid homing move. Um, yeah, negative 13 is not too bad. Not amazing, but it's not too bad. I mean, we don't need to test the tracking because it's homing. Uh, Feng's backscreen blow is on another level of cheap. It's negative 15 on block, but since it has two active frames, if you get it to be negative 14, and if you do another one, you'll backscreen blow their punish. <laughs> I mean, that's just like some really goofy shit. Uh, Kazuya's is cheaper. Counter hit launcher, I think, right? And it's safe on block. So how's that for cheap? You try to do a one-two string, and then he's like, oh, I gotta juggle, bitch. And if you block it, he's safe. So Bob is a wave dash character. So remember, at a wave dash, you could do forward uh, forward moves at a wave dash easily, including all these that I'm going over right now. You do a crouch dash. And during the wave dash, you input one of the crouch dash inputs as quarter circle forward, and then forward. So forward neutral quarter circle forward forward two, for example. Oop. Easy, right? So all these moves are a threat from Wave Dash, as are all his wild standing moves. Let's see if I can do it. There it is, see? Oh shit, Wave Dash into wild standing 2-1. We got those, baby. We got those. I'm doing it better than ever before, shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> so you don't have to risk a... Well, they're both super unsafe on block. The DP and the... You can also hop kick, of course, from, from that. You can do all that shit. So Bob's wave dash is good. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <sighs> so 4 4 4 4 is pretty decent. Another wall splat, too, at that. Alright, next we got 4 4 3 plus 4. Ooh, we got another one of these. Guaranteed ground hit. Oh, I was about to say. Oof. All right, four, four, three plus four is negative seven to negative two. We're talking about six active frames on that second kick. Six active frames on the second kick. Um, knocks down on normal hit. Not much else to say. Probably hits grounded, right? Let's see. Second kick hits grounded. Okay, good. Only nine damage, but if you jump over like decent Oki tool, you jump over something, or you uh, they wake up into crouching, you beat out a wake up kick. It's pretty good. Twenty six frame startup though. So uh, the second hit by its uh, oh second hit whiffs it's negative fourteen so you want that second hit to connect for sure the first hit doesn't knock down so maybe that's like a side step situation that's super slow so side stepping is gonna be weird. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, weird to. Definitely no tracking on that though. No inherent tracking at least. Alright, next we got back forward one. I already been talking about it a bit here. This shit is cheap. At the wall, especially. This shit is still fucking amazing. This is still one of the best backs. Like, as far as evasive properties go, this is one of the best. Easily. Easily one of the best. It's not even a contest, right? And then it's because, like, you know, you got negative 12. You got, it's being super evasive, not launch punishable. You know, thank God it took away the normal hit knockback. It's still a nice amount of damage, and it's plus 9, but it pushes back very far. Plus 9 with a lot of pushback. Oh, wow, down 2 still reaches. All hail the mighty range of down 2. <laughs> 
Cracker Jagger doesn't reach, but down two does. So no tracking on that thing. The range is good. He sticks out his fist quite a bit. So the range isn't bad. In any situation where you're like at negative like eight and shit with pushback, this is always an option for you. Okay, see? As long as there's pushback involved, you're good to do it. But even then, I went 14 frames instead of a jab. And he's like, fuck out of here, son. Fuck out of here. What about 13? No, I don't think so. I'm Bob. Kiss my ass. That's 13 also. What's 12? Oh, yeah. Okay, 12 catches him. 12, yes. 13, no. 13, no. Oh, wow, okay, I have to mash it out. I got it there. 13 frame mid, yes. Maybe not a high, though. 14, definitely no. That's a 13. Yep, that's 13. Uh, did I miss anything? Run up and duck while standing free so they would expect the full crouch down. Oh, you're talking about Jack. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, his backswing blow is very good. Back forward one. Next, we got back, back four. Ah. While you're running away with the back dash cancel. Okay, so this isn't just back, back four. This is back, hold back, plus four. The way you see, you type this out is lowercase b, uppercase b, plus four. That means you have to hold the back. There are other times where you can kind of let go of the stick and press the four, or press the button, whatever, in the end. But if you see an uppercase, it means you have to, like, at the same time, press them. This is good. This is a good move to use while retreating. Just naturally, the input is there for you. It's a launcher? Oh boy, it's a launcher. Not only is it a launcher, it's a safe on block mid launcher. Low crush on frame 15 according to RB Norway. Negative four. Force crouch. Jesus Christ. You could just do it back to back almost, right? His while standing moves have good range. Woo, we found a sweet spot, but it's too slow. So if you're going to whiff punish with something, whiff punish with something faster. But you could definitely set up a whiff punish with this move. Off of the back dash. Sidestep too, but you... Uh, Sidestep also, but you have to know your opponents while standing tracking. But remember, it forces crouch. So your opponent can only sidestep towards your left side on the one... If you're on 1P side. Your right side if you're on 2P side. Unless you're online, then things get weird because everybody could select their side. But if you're playing in person, offline. Alright, so uh, we don't need a sense of tracking on this. Because it's a backdash move, the range is going to be a little funky, but it looks good. His leg goes all the way out there. Look at that. Yeah, it does look good. 
It looks like it's bad on whiff, but the range looks decent. Good move, good move. Next is back, back, three plus four. That's his unblockable, apparently. <laughs> this is the old bound move, right? It used to be this. That used to be uh, uh, his tech and tag two juggle. I don't know about Tekken 6, but in Tekken Tag 2, you would do the Shoryuken right into that, and that would bound. Now it would floor break. 57 damage floor break. This dude probably has some sick ass floor break into wall carry juggles. Just guessing. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So we don't care about the other unblockables. It's like fucking whatever. You can fake out the back back 3 plus 4, it's this big ass kick. Uh, backpack T plus 4 2 goes into the punch. She has that fake out. I guess that's just, you should know that uh, same frame data as the forward forward 2, negative 8 it says. Uh, and then backpack 2 plus 3 is that shit. Uh, okay, so that's that. That's the unblockables. Oh, that kick unblockables are high? What about the other one? That looks mid. They're both highs. Oh, the kick is the mid. The punch is a high. Huh. <laughs> Weird. Uh, plus six on hit, so basically it's super fucking cheap. Jack's full crouch down back one. Jack's full crouch down back one. Uh, it used to be plus nine in second six. Negative 9 on block, plus 9 on hit. You couldn't... Um, if I recall correctly, if he hits you with one of them when your back was to the wall, you could not low parry the next one. You had to block it. So he would do full cross, down back one, down back one, down, and you had to duck it. You had to duck at the wall, basically, eventually. And the moment you ducked at the wall, he fucking... Hits you with the pelea, yeah. With the pelea against the fucking wall. Pelea. <laughs> the Pela. Get fucking wall splatted because Jack was cheap. 6.0 Jack was crazy. He got nerfed going into uh, BR, the console version. 6.0 was a fucked up game. 6.0 Dragon Ball's while running 2 launched on normal hit. Alright, so uh, I talked about uh, wave dash to forward forward moves. We're going into while running right now. You could also do the same trick for while running. You could crouch dash, forward neutral, core circle forward, and then forward forward. And the thing about it is, for example, while running three for this trick, you uh, have to input the last forward and the three, almost like a just like a like an, uh, just frame electric basically, to do it. Unless you're far away, if you're right in their face, I'm saying. Otherwise, you're gonna get like four four three or shit like that. So you're gonna get shit like that if you don't do it. It's not as strict as it sounds. Okay, I'm fucking up like crazy all of a sudden. Okay, he do the he cannot do the uh, Jin shortcut. Jin has a shortcut. Jin and Devil Jin, where they can wave that shit to up forward plus three to get a slash kick. Whatever. But anyway, that's his while running three slash kick. His is plus 9 to plus 15. 7 active frames. Guardable plus 15, obviously. All right, but Bob has something else. This slash kick jumps on frame 3, oddly enough. I don't know if they all jump that early. Slash kicks are always good. Those of you who don't know, they're, all, they're a semi-universal running pressure tool. That are heavily frame matches on block. And uh, you generally want to step him at the last second. You can kind of step him on reaction when you get like used to it. You can almost step him on reaction. See? The moment he screamed, yeah, I sidestepped it. His is super linear, it looks like. And then you typically get the rear. Because they move forward so much that they're going to go right by you. And you're going to get the rear. 
Neo Geo Battle Coliseum music? I got that shit. Anyway, he has another while running move. While running 3 plus 4. Now, this one is a slower startup, but the... Uh, there's more active frames on this. 11 active frames. I did not know that. This also hits grounded, unlike his slash kick. Hey, thanks for the follow, PC Fighter. Zero, zero. Boom, see? Hits grounded. This might floor break, if I were to guess, on the floor break stage. So this is really more like uh, a pressure tool when they wake up, just in case they stay down. So if they stay down, you're going to whip this, right? Like, when you knock them back. Let's say you knock them away at the end of a juggle, and then you run up, and then they decide to stay down. You got that option. Maybe not on reaction. You probably have, you have to do it pretty early, because he jumps very far forward. Uh, let me give you an example. See? Instantly. I just did an instant while running D plus 4 there to get that. If I just did it the, the uh, old-fashioned way, do it to a full run, it whiffs. But if you do it instantly, uh, and you don't suck like I do, Now I can't do it. I did the first try. There it goes. It looks like it's a good setup. That's a very good move to use in those situations. But if I were to guess... Yep, it whiffs. Risky. Risky business. But it covers you, I'm guessing, if they hold back. Let's see. Can he back quick roll this? No, but it's still got it back at him. Yeah, it covers you if they hold back. They probably recover in time to do maybe an armor move, maybe, because armor and uh, rage arts do have eight frames for startup. Unless it's Kazumi, but she cannot do hers instantly. It's a forward forward input. Uh, maybe Gigas also. I think Gigas starts up faster. His down three plus four when he does like the. Still, though, this is, you know, test out in any of these knockback situations. Test out instant while running 3 plus 4 against tech, against holding back, and staying down. See, just take a, take a gander, see what happens, you know? They have to stay down. If they could tech, they have to stay down for a bit to a wake up kick. See, even though that wake up kick interrupted me, it's like you get knocked away and then he gets pressure. It's only 14 damage. And that beat up that beat out the wake up kick. I did it by accident, but it's really that the wild running people for is so slow. Look at that. Right over that shit. It, look, it was counter hit. It actually beat it out. Yeah, it's actually counter hitting him. Damn, that's a tight window. Uh, NBC uses this to finish off people from time to time. It's a great move. Believe it or not, Bob does have a, a shitty full crotch mix-up. He has a string that either ends in mid or a stagger low. No, Bob's full crotch... Oh, full crotch mix-up. Sorry, okay. I, I read that at, for some reason I was thinking, like, oh, crotch dash. No, no, you meant full crotch. How hard can you get punished if they roll right? You could probably launch him for that. Let's see, I have to record this on myself. My guess is he recovers slow. Usually with those running moves, they recover, you know. The universe of cases, despite them being plus on block always... They just about all recover slow. Dragon Ball's while running too. If you step that shit or a whiff, you, he's fucking wide open. Now, this is going to be harder for me to do on 2P side. My instant while running on 2P side is not good. Practice your shit on 2P side, guys. That looked a little slow, but I'll try it anyway. See, now the thing is, how do you punish it? All right, I have to know which way uh, which way the camera is. Oh, look, he saw that shit with the way he recovered. There you go. You have to like really be ready for that shit if you want to punish that. <laughs> Fucking Bob and his weird ass recovery. Okay, there we switch sides. There we go. The timing is strict. Alright. It's easier if I go that way, oddly enough. There you go. Back throw. He recovers crouching. Maybe. I don't know if he stands. But, uh... Okay.
So there you go. You get your. You, you got back throw. Sure. Uh, thanks, Weg WegQZ. <laughs> thanks for the birthday wishes. At least it's another character that has a huge sidestep opportunities. Yep. So yeah, you got the back throw. I. It looks like he recovers crouching. So I don't know if you can get jabs. Yeah. See, no, you can't instantly get a jab. You can if you delay it. So the same rule is gonna apply for back throw. If you run up and throw too fast, yeah, see, it whiffs. You have to delay. Luckily, holding forward is gonna slow it down for you naturally. There you go, see. His back throw looks really stupid. Why does that do so much damage? He just tosses you like, whatever. I don't know. Thank you, Moon Hydrogen. Appreciate it. So yeah. Your back throw is definitely there. You get your back hitting strings, all that good shit. So it is very, very risky if the opponent knows, like, is cognizant of what's going to happen if they tech. You got to remember, it is a tech and then you have to dash up. They can whiff if they're not ready for that shit. So you could totally abuse people that don't know what they're doing by, like, waking up into, like, a back turn hot kick or something because they whiff their, whi their whiff punish. Because they didn't dash up or something, or they didn't dash up enough, or they dashed up with the wrong move, with the wrong timing. That's just one of those things, man. You can really pocket set a motherfucker in the eyes. But in a general situation, it is a mix-up tool. Off of knockbacks like that. It is a mix-up tool, where if they get up teching, I mean, you don't get anything guaranteed, but you could keep your pressure up in a different way. Because they're going to get up looking for that. If they know what they're doing, they're going to get up looking for that specifically. The cannonball. So they're not going to get up into swinging right away. If they get up to swinging right away, we already established it's going to probably whiff. Unless it's like a weird ass move. Or that tracks for some reason. So yeah, this one was good. And as uh, was mentioned in the chat, it is also his race drive. Oh, we are looking for other settings. So while running 3 plus 4, hold forward, right? So if they were to stay down, theoretically, you could get a lot of damage in a situation where, let's see, you connected this, and they go, I'm going to stay down because he's going to dash in my face, and I'm going to wake up, kick him to kill him or something after he whips. Well, huh, I'm holding forward. Do I have to tap forward again? I have to tap forward again. What's the timing on it? Oh, hold three plus four. Hold three plus four. Okay. So it's like uh, uh, Gigas. It's like Gigas. Gigas has the same thing going on with his forward three plus four. You have to hold the three plus four. And then you can four. But how do you... uh? Is that guaranteed, or can I check that? Oops, alright. He could have checked that. It spiked him. Oh, it did that hit animation where they, like, flinch on the floor. So, does that mean the ass bump is guaranteed afterwards? Oh, I ain't hold forward. Ugh. So that is guaranteed, right? You bot players would know. Oh, really? He couldn't tech, though. I'd have to record this on myself, wouldn't I? I just have to record this on myself. Oh, 
Okay, okay. Gotcha. So he forces the mix up. <clears throat> no, 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 it's not. It's not guaranteed. I, I was able to get up and block just by holding back. Alright, um... That's still good. That's still comeback material, because you can force the roll mix-up after that. You can still force, they can wake up, you can force that mix-up. That roll one used to float back rollers, I think. Alright, so now we got the wall standing moves. So while standing one is 15 frames, mid, looks like an elbow, but it's probably not. And while standing one, two is mid high, natural combo. 31 damage, you're not gonna use this as a block punisher. This is something you're gonna be like ducking under stuff and maybe using it, I don't know. Um, counter it, very delayable. Good move. This is money you're going to be using during the neutral. And nowhere else. That delay, it is negative 9, but doesn't jail. I'm sure. While standing one by itself is negative 11, so there's a reason for people to want to swing. Okay, so no jail. There you go. So even if he doesn't delay it, the gap is there for you to get counter hit. And then he has while standing 1-3, which is also a natural combo. Oh, we gotta check that out. Hold on a second. Alright, maybe at the wall. You know what? This might get some weird ass hokey because it keeps them close. Oh, 49 damage. But if you want that float, that might be better. Keeps it, keeps it close, so you can get a crouch dash or a wild running. That's not wild running. There it is. Oh, too early. But you know what? That gives me hope. That makes me think that I have the timing to really force a mix-up. Oh, boy. Don't do that. There it is. Put a little delay on that shit. Little delay on that shit. Not enough. Huh. Maybe not. Alright. Still, you can play around with this. Uh, this looks like the kind of move that at the wall. You get something guaranteed, but... Bob has had a few moves like that, and he didn't get anything guaranteed. Anything unique, at least. Have I gotten up 3 plus 4? Yeah, I did that before. Yeah, video games, I did that before.
Uh, while steady 1, 2, it's a uh, down 3 plus 4. It looks be uh, better for damage, but it knocks him away. Nope, he still doesn't get it, yeah. Damn it. Nothing picks up. Wait, how about what happens if he does this? That oh, knocks away. Uh, no float into resplat outside of certain angles, probably. They can't punch Perry his picks up like Gigas in his marriage time. Yeah, that's for sure. Gigas sucks. Alright, so while steady 1 2, still an alright move, still good. While steady 1 3 is negative 14. You cannot delay the 3 at all. No counter hit properties. It would wall splat, obviously. 31 damage. So if you can confirm. Yeah, I was trying to see if that was hit confirmable. Doesn't seem like it. Alright, still, decent move. 1 3, not so much. 1 2 is pretty good. While, st while standing 1 2. Next, we got while standing 2 with the two follow ups. Now, while standing 2 basically leads into his 14 frame launcher. While standing 2, 1. 14 frames while standing, high damage launcher. Very high. And then he has while standing 2 2, which is also a natural combo. 14 frames. While standing 2-2 two, two is uh, negative 13 force crouch negative uh, on block plus 5 force crouch on hit Knocks down on counter hit very delayable Very delayable of course it does a natural combo if you delay it only if you don't delay it So that's a pretty good move to use in the neutral in general and then while standing 2-1 is your go-to, I duck something. It's also often used as a whiff punish for ball players. They'll duck from, like, back here. And then you whiff something, they'll just throw it out there. They'll try to clip it, basically. But it is risky, because if you fuck it up, it's negative 20. Very bad on block. That's still a very good launcher. Very good. A lot of range, too. Like, more than most other wall standing launchers. Especially for 14 frames. That first hit has really good range. Alright, so... You can do the same juggles for a placeholder. Yeah, that shit, same shit works. If you don't fuck it up like I just did. Next, we got wall standing 3. You know, wall standing 3 is... 17 frame startup. While standing 3 goes to 3 plus 4, which is negative 4 on block. Force crouch. That second, uh, the sit down has uh, 9 active frames, so that can be plus 4. I'm starting to think this is like a wall combo thing. Or just a juggle tool in general. Maybe not. Maybe maybe it is like a wall combo thing. I don't know. Because that sit down is what? 28 damage? Mid? Yeah. 
Guaranteed follow-up. No launcher. I was not familiar with anything. <clears throat> and then he has uh, standard while standing four. Plus five on hit. Negative six on block. And he has a wall standing one plus two. Fifteen frames. Negative nine. Counter hit launcher. Okay, that's what that's for. Counter hit launcher. Reset. You can reset with down four if they don't tech. So they have to tech if they want to avoid that damage. Close enough that that tech is gonna fuck with your Oki. Can't get the timing to get that to hit later. Yeah. Uh, if I get, try to get that timing, I have to swing it earlier, but then he's it whiffs. So I can't get it to do that. Alright, that's good. Uh, that reminds me of Mardix while steady 4. I guess Gigas is while steady 4 is the same now. It does that same knockdown, that flip. And uh, you could do some interesting oaky stuff with that. But Bob stuff doesn't track well enough for you to really do the same stuff. Alright, so that's all his wall standing moves. So now we're gonna test the tracking. Now what's a good way to do that? How does Bob recover crouching? Pushes out. Negative four. Why can't that be negative two? Negative seven. Anybody got a good way to put Bob in full crotch with like negative one or two? Let's see. No, they aren't video games. That's not true. Negative four is too negative. I need negative three. Let's see here. No, I don't think he has a good way. That means I might have to just test this in a neutral situation. Just throwing it out and timing my sidesteps, which I'm not great at. Uh. 
This is Control F S, because that means recover crouching. Wow, that doesn't work. That's no good. There's too many results. Hey, thanks for the host, man. Talks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't. I'm gonna have to just do this in the neutral situation and try to time my sidesteps. What up, what up, what up? Fighting gives our life. Sure, I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna... Uh-uh, right? Maybe I won't. I'll do it instantly. So, it looks like it should track on that side, and it does. Damn, that wall standing one looks legit. Seems like it tracks to his left side. And you could go to his right to get around it, but it's very tight window here. Let's test, uh, oh wait, I got another idea actually. Hold on a second. Force crowds, uh, forward four. What's forward four at? No, he has to recover crouching. That's a bad idea then, I can't do that. No, actually, I can't do that. Forward, uh, three. Zero, doesn't force crouch. Zero. Force crouch, but he could only sidestep towards the background. Two looks good. Three does not. Four does not. One plus two does not. So one and two. One and two track really well to that side. All right, now we need to switch sides. Yeah, see, one is fucking weird. So one and two once again. Four. Damn, everything goes to his right, huh? Yeah, Bob was one of those fuckers you don't want to sidestep, really, when he's crouching. Not too much. And if you do sidestep, you want to go to your right, not your left. Ah, thank you. Happy birthday to me. All right, so yeah, as well, static tracking is very solid. All right, so now we can go to his full crowd stuff. <clears throat> That's a crouch dash. So we got the full crouch down forward two by itself, plus three on hit. Negative seven on block, plus four on hit, says RB Norway. No, sorry. Plus three on hit, negative eight on block. Same thing on counter hit. So, full cross down four, three, one. Natural combo plus four on hits. Mid, mid. Negative 13 on, no, sorry, negative seven on block. So, full cross down four, one, one. A down four, two, one, rather. Not a bad move. Mid, mid, safe on block. 26 damage plus four. Okay. Uh, negative seven on block plus four. Nothing special on counter hit. Then he has one plus two. Foot crouch down forward two. One one plus two. Negative thirteen on block. Yeah. 
Knocks back. Knocks back. Second hit on counter hit makes a combo. Not on normal hit. No delay. A little bit. You could delay it a little bit. But no counter hit property, so the delay is kind of whatever. It is only negative 13, though. So that's good. And then he has full crouch, down forward, two, four. Oh, this bootleg ass shit. Okay. But the full cross down forward two four is a natural combo for decent damage and it's only negative one on hit. And you recover standing. And again the low on counter hit gives him the same mid. But the low by itself on block is fucking awful. Bob's still plenty good despite his standing punishment. It's crazy how all his old mains dropped him. Well, that goes to show you what I always said about Bob. People didn't main him because they liked Bob. Sure, I'm sure there's some. Like, what's his name? Big Boy from ATL? Is that his name? I forget his name. The Big... Well, I forget if it's actually Big Boy. There's a person that goes by Big Boy. And there's a guy that's just a really big guy. And I might be just calling him Big Boy. I forget his name. But there's a guy in ATL that's definitely like a Bob main. I know that. Like, he likes Bob. He actually likes the character. Uh, but I'm pretty sure most of the people playing Bob in earlier games didn't like the character. I mean, look at this character is fucking lame. It's a lame ass joke. He was just really cheap before. Really cheap. Now he's still good. I think he's still good. I don't even think he's bad. I think he's just not good enough. <laughs> he's just like middling now. It's just kind of, you know, he's just kind of there. Did my playlist end? I think my playlist is ended here. Uh, yeah. Let's go with the the good old Yakuza tunes. They never let me down. What is it? Playlist 5, I think. Yep. <clears throat> so yeah, this full crouch shit is kind of whatever. The mix-up is in the second hit, but it, it only matters on counter hit, not on normal hit. So it's like, who gives a shit, right? I think this full crouch down forward 2 one is a good move, though. Don't bother mixing up the second hit. But I think just that's a good move. Okay, so no high crush on it though. Uh, but 14 frames, so. Yeah. No pushback there, so the back seam blow is not as good. He's pretty lame a character, but his fighting style is pretty cool. Eh. I think that this is a great improvement. Up forward 1 plus 2 4 is a great improvement for Bob. I think. Does it make up for all the nerfs? No, but the whole point is he was too good before. He had to be nerfed. All right, so let's uh, have a look-see here. This might be a decent round ender if you commit to the last hit to make a negative 13 just in case they block it. If you end it at the low, it's awful, right? Because then it's like, oh boy, never mind. You can't commit to the third hit on block. That's why. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, I fucked up the dash. No, not that. <sighs> Can't crush.
Yeah, they pretty much at the same time. So it's a forced mix-up. You have to guess. You have to guess. Alright, that's that. Um, that's the full crowd strings. When I say a full crouch mix-up, a good one is you have the unique knockdown or a unique low of some sort from full crouch. That's like, it starts mid, so it's not really like a good full crouch mix-up, as you said before, right? So next we got side step 1 plus 2. This is another cheap fucking move at the wall. This move is really good. Forces crouch, negative 5. This is like a, a wall splat tool. 100%, 100%. Even in a neutral, though, it's not bad. The only thing is, like, it doesn't have much range. Uh, I do want to note that the way you sidestep determines which arms he swings with, right? Right sidestep, he swings left. Left sidestep, he swings with his right. I don't know if that does anything for the tracking. Yeah, it does, looks like. I mean, you want to sidestep away from it anyway. Yeah. Force crouch, negative five. And of course, you can just do this if they swing also. Really, really, really good move. I don't know if this has been nerfed. I don't know if it was always negative five, but I knew it was always safe on block. Next, we got back turn down two. That's negative nine. Knocks back. And we got a crumple stun. Very nice. <laughs> I don't think so. So he has a back turn counter hit soul. Alright, that's cool. According to RB Norway, that's a 15 frame startup. Hey, what's up to Serrano? Pretty good so far. Pretty good so far. That move is super evasive. What are you talking about? It's back turn down two? It looks like it. I mean, it doesn't matter if you put him in a situation where he's back turn and he's like negative nine or some shit. Oh, you mean sidestep two? Yeah, sidestep two is really evasive. It's not just because of the sidestep. <clears throat> you look at the animation, he's leaning into his sidestep further. So that shit makes this shit super evasive. From whatever you, you'll notice when you're in the heat of the moment and you're playing as Bob, and you use this every once in a while, you'll notice it starts to evade shit. It's like, oh wow, how did he get around that? It's because of this move. This is a really good move. Very very good move for Bob. And if they hold back, look at that. So much pushback. Definitely could sidestep that nest. You could probably back that shit too. The old back. Damn it. That was uh, not as fast as it could have been. Yeah, see? Oh, I'm still back turn. Alright, so next we got... I've been doing this by accident several times. So his supercharge, if you match 1 plus 2 during it... He could go into his 1 plus 2? What? Oh, that's the weird fake out. And then if you match 4 during it... He has that kick. It's a high unblockable. And he keeps his supercharge if he hits you. Which is kind of cool. No, he doesn't. I'm sorry. I lied. If he whips, he keeps it. <laughs> That's his gimmicky ass shit. 
If you kept the Simple Charge after it, I'd say that's pretty cool, but... When would you use it, right? I don't think so. Alright, we got... Balance. B-A-L. I'm assuming that's what B-A-L stands for. Balance? Ball? Where the hell is forward 3 plus 4? It doesn't say here. Spinner ball. So it's ball, not balance. I saw BAL and I assume it was balance. So spinner ball. Forward 3 plus 4. And you can also do 1 plus 2 forward. And of course his rage drive goes into it if you hold forward. Now this is only with forward he has moves out of it. So, BAL1, this is plus 6 on hits, negative 8 on block, and it's a counter hit tool. Now, there's no way for him to force enough frame advantages to really mix you up with this outside of his rage drive. So, keep that in mind. But outside of that... It also probably crushes highs if he does it out of that. Um, the thing is, when you use it out of 1 plus 2 forward out of a combo situation, he also could force the mix-ups that way. Like, uh... See? Well, that was too slow and that was a bad option. But in general, you would if you were to get up, you'd have to guess mid versus low. Because you know, he has the, um... The low. Which starts to jungle, if I'm not mistaken. And you do whatever juggle. Wow. I don't know what the juggle would be, but you would do juggle. So the mid is a crumple stun. Alright, so we got that. Next, we got two. That's a mid homing move. This is negative 11 on block. It does a tail spin of ET out of the air, corkscrew. And on counter hit, it also does a corkscrew. This is 23 frame startup. The one is the fastest option out of this. This is 19. The two is 23 frames. <clears throat> startup. Next we got three, which is a high. Nosebleed stun. This is 20 frame startup. Plus eight on hits. Sorry, plus 8 on block. What? Plus 8 on block? Plus 8 on block. Alright, so if you stand still and you're afraid, he can put himself at plus 8, but pushes back. If people don't know, oh, you recover crouching. Boo. Alright, so your mix up isn't as good. Sidestep block might beat everything here. Yeah, it probably does. Uh, it's not a mix-up tool to use outside of the situations I just talked about. Post combo and off of the rage. I'm going to test the rage drive options in a second. Um, so we, the low combo starter normal hit, negative 26 on block. And then 3 plus 4, the ass bump. Now the second bot is probably lying to me if I were to guess. No, it's not. This is negative 18. Force crouch on block. Yikes. That looks like it should be plus. And he can recover back turn if you hold back. See, he can recover back turn. So those are the options. Now let's talk about when he could actually mix you up with them.
Oh, forces crouch. He can only go towards the background. Right? Yeah, and that interrupts while standing four. Oops. Ooh, does that give him a combo? Alright, let's switch sides. Timing is weird. Yeah, you can't step that at all. All right. So then, what what matters now is the low. Really, we already verified the fastest mid. We can't step it. <laughs> yeah. Not looking good for Bob here, at least. Maybe Lily. Oops, I went down for some reason. Yep. Now the low probably... Uh, you probably When you sidestep that way, it looks like you fuck up the juggle. It exchanges. It exchanges, and it uh, exchanges in his favor if he dick jab. So anything, if he does anything else, though, dick jab is gonna beat him. But the mid, the safe counter hit mid, is this safe? Yeah, the safe on block counter hit mid is gonna exchange in his favor. So you definitely don't want to dick jab. And you recover crouching, so arm removal is not an option. Now, you, I'm pretty sure you could be a cheating dirtbag and rage drive him through if you got a one button rage drive. Rage art, sorry. They need to ban that. I'm sorry, but that should not be allowed. You're not supposed to be able to rage rage out that fast from crouching. Let's see if I can do it manually. Okay. So the window is big enough for me to crouch cancel and do it manually. Which also means... I'm trying to insta while standing into armor. It's that's for some reason that's harder to do for me. Oh, 
His you can, apparently. I didn't know that. Uh, I have an unrelated question. I always see top players block Dragon Ball's forward two, three. You mean forward two, four? Is that what you meant? Just kidding. I never see anything done about that move, and every Dragon Ball does the full string always. Video games. The reason you see that is because that move comes out by accident. Dragon Ball's forward two, three is to keep you covered if you fuck up while running two, because forward two is a high. And uh, the four, four two four, sorry, and the four and the four two four is a counter hit. Uh, formerly a juggle starter, I don't know if he still gets a juggle. Oh yeah, he still does down to the pickup. Uh, so basically, especially if you're doing instant while running two, the move that comes out if you fuck up instant while running two is gonna be forward two, which is a high, and uh, the opponent might duck because you could totally dash up into a down two. They'll, they'll duck. So if they duck and you happen to whiff a forward two, which recovers relatively slow. You can get Ida while standing launcher, so you keep the four, you do you throw out the four to keep you covered and it's safe on block. That's just the thing that all Dragon Ball players, the good ones, do always. I mean, they might use it on purpose too, but generally that move comes out by accident. It's not a bad move, but it's just like he has so many, so much good shit that you don't really have to use it. It's a lot of damage. On counter hit. Forward 2 4 is a counter hit string. It does a lot of damage. So, anyway, I learned something today. Bob, you can just do his uh, rage drive from crouching. But, like, rage drives that don't have a down forward input, I'm sure you cannot do them from crouching. Down, down forward, down back. Rage art. I keep calling it rage drives. Rage arts. Rage arts. Rage art. All right, so we established that as far as sidestepping goes, it's a lost cause. You're not gonna sidestep it. And the same thing will happen if you do this. See, the thing about that is you cannot um, tech because he's spiking you with the one plus two. So we have that established. Can Rage Drive between the hits of Brian's down 3-2? That's fucked up. Yeah, remember, uh, Ra uh, Rage Arts. I keep calling it Rage Drives. Rage Arts, as far as I know, they all have 8 frames start up until they're armored. All Just like regular armor moves in 99% of the time. So, that's just, that's just how it works. <laughs> that's why, for example, Josie's down 4-4 four four into the high option. You cannot armor or Rage uh, Art through it. Because she's too much uh, frame advantage. She's like plus 11 or whatever. You don't have enough plus frames. I mean, down 3-2 for Brian is not a bad move, but it's a low high. It's not that big a deal. So, them being able to do that isn't a super big deal. Alright, so... What I'm up to now, I've been going at it for almost 4 hours. And I'm up to the uh, cross dash move. So, I'm going to call it... It's a good, good stopping point. So, for, for Bob, part two. Part three, I will do wave dash. We'll look further into wall stuff. Of course, we'll go through his throws. He has a wall splat throw. That, that's a wall splat throw. Of course, he has this. He has, he's one of the only characters in the game that still has a juggle throw. Like Jack and Asuka. So, he has that. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna call it here. I might pop up again later to play some Bayonetta. If you guys want to tune in for that later today. But I'm gonna take a break. I gotta do some editing for this one. My Bob Part 1 and my Dragon Off Part 3. Before I upload it to the YouTube. But you guys already know if you scroll down, you see the YouTube. So. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Much love. Thanks for all the subs, donations. Thanks for the host, Nam Talks. And all that good shit. Enjoy Mr. Young PP. I'm gonna host him right now. So, hopefully, I'll see you guys later or soon or whatever. Latest.